Good evening, it is Friday, and time for another Weirded Beardos podcast. As a warning to those with zero sense of humor, or are otherwise, little bitches, please stop listening now. Dr. Chadder, and the bearded techie, will most certainly cross lines of moral decency, that are well beyond the average shit and fart joke you may be used to. The show, is unscripted, and in the moment, so, who knows what will fall out of their dirty little mouths. That being stated, please give them a thumbs up, subscribe, and feel free to chime in on the conversation with a comment. Additionally, you may join their mailing list at weirdedbeardos.com and be automatically entered in future contests and free giveaways. If you are willing to call in, send a text to 530-YouTube with your name and topic, and we may give you a call. And now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the funniest duo in their personal universe. The Weirded Beardos. I must have blurry. It's got to be the stream quality for some reason. I'm not getting good speed. Oh, it's uh, I'm on Wi-Fi. Ethernet is not uh, great working right now, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. Technical okay. issues. Do you need me to stand up? No. Okay. Squeeze back. Okay. Suck it in. Yep, 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 we're, uh, we're, uh, cooking with gas now. What's going on in the kitchen? Okay. This is the first time I made a mistake, so I'm to see how it feels. <laughs> Dang, she wastes no time. We're still blurry, though. Yeah, they give it time to catch up, I guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, have you guys been? Fine. Do you yeah. hang out during the week? Never hang out with Jenny, for whatever yeah, reason. I just, I've been really busy with schoolwork lately. That's a good busy to have. How many classes you taking? I'm only taking two now, but. But as an adult, that's, that's a lot when you got real life. Yeah. In the way. Yeah. So, you right there, sir. Yeah, just getting like that meat is kicking in. I haven't had meat in like over a month. It's just like. Well, the bathroom's right there if you need to. I don't know. It's just tiring. You shit in my house before, so. It's <laughs> it's not that kind of thing. Okay. I'm just it just made me groggy. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm starting to sweat. That's why I take my socks off. Ooh, I'm getting a little <laughs> sweating. Cause I haven't had meat sweats. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of the last time I had beef, beef. It's been a while. It's about a, about a week for me because I tried not to eat as much. Do you stay beef. with like chicken or? Um, you chicken, but I was eating a lot of like pizza rolls and just quick things like that. <laughs> so I was like, it's definitely not healthy. So this is probably the mm. first home cooked meal. Yeah. In a, in a while that I've had, I've cooked like. But again, like I consider macaroni and cheese kind of a process type thing too, so I didn't make the macaroni myself. But certain things, man, when was the last time I it wasn't a microwave or an uh, ooh, yeah, it's probably been a week or so since I've been you know, sweating right now. I mean, it's still kind of warm in here, but still it's chilly outside. But I just opened that door. Yeah. Today's guest, we didn't have a guest last week, which I, I haven't put the the audio podcast up yet because it's I've been lazy. I'm playing too much because normally I would sit down on my computer at night and do all that but I've been playing Call of Duty with this gentleman across from me until like 5 o'clock in the morning sometimes we start around 10 sometimes we start around 11 but we still end up around 4 or 5 in the morning Yeah. and I look at my oh 2 o'clock 2.30 oh, I'll play one more mm-hmm. and the next thing you know it's 5 o'clock and I start I'm like oh I'm, I'm exhausted <laughs> and three hours <laughs> went by from playing video games well you know, yeah because you're and i sit in that chair is uncomfortable i need to yeah. drag that chair around that's my normal comfortable chair but these are just not comfortable for long-term sitting i have an orthopedic chair which is i got really lucky i found it at goodwill it's got yes. a nice like arch support in there 
about to bust out that recliner. If we, no lumbar support in that thing. Still. Well, first of all, it wouldn't last me. If I, lay, if I lay down and try to watch TV, I fall asleep almost immediately. Okay. I can't lay. If I had to be seating, sitting at all times, if I start to lean, the party's over. There no, we moved the couch to the house. garage for that video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys used to film in the garage? Yeah, yeah that was oh. where all the Weirder Beardos videos were from. That's why the background looks... Cause I almost did the same background for in here. Mm-hmm. I was like, nah, I want that distinction just because this was going to be... The fabric looks better, too. My... Like oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Sheen. Okay. Yeah, it looks real because someone was like, oh, man, like I want a brick background like that. Like, how would I... How would that be hard to keep clean? And I realized, oh, no, it's just a background. Mm-hmm. And so I ordered the one... And it was the only one that was that size and the color that was didn't have something like Santa Claus or something in the background. And then they messed it up and then had to send me another one because it got lost. And then like a week later, the other one, so that's why I have two. So I didn't buy two intentionally. There's two showed up. So it allowed us to do the corner. So I thought it was amazing. Yeah, it looks nice. It blocks the window. It actually looks real. You know, the actual stream brick. is ridiculously blurry right now, but it's... It's a uh, background's fake. <laughs> it's got, it's got We're in my up, office. Upload speed right in the there. house. Oh, well. Got to upgrade to gigabit, man. I think. Okay, it's never been a problem before. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we can bring her in now. I guess okay. seven minutes is enough. Usually they take a while. She was in right away. So she's a <laughs> professional, obviously. I am timely. So I'm timely. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm Jeremy. I'm the one that's been in contact with you. Nice to meet, oh, to meet you. You too, and this is... I'm Steven. And I'm Steven. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi. So kind of, we know a little bit about you, but summarize what you do from your perspective, because I'll mess it up. <laughs> okay. okay, well, okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a certified, certified sex, sex therapist, therapist with a practice, with a practice in, Seattle. in Seattle. And then I and also, I also wrote, wrote a book, and I have an online, online course, course for a podcast. A podcast. Awesome. So what, so you have a master's in psychology, correct? Right. Right. Master's in psychology. So psychology. When you started to go to school, was that, was psychology your goal or was sex therapy, couples therapy your goal or something you just kind of got stuck into you? <laughs> no, I did it on purpose. Um, I got my master's at, at I don't know, 45, something like yeah, that after divorce. I got divorce. my doctorate at 42, so it's okay. Okay. Good. I'm behind you then. Um, <laughs> And I knew I wanted to go to couples counseling, and early on I got the sex therapy training. Okay. So. Now, did you do the sex therapy training in a university, or did you have to? That's a good question. Yeah, it's not a degree. degree. It's a a sort sort of certificate. certificate. There's a lot of training. training. Sorry, I'm getting getting back. back. (laughs) I'm hearing myself like, like. Three seconds seconds after I got. Okay, let's try that. Is that better? Oh, okay, that fixed it for me. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's better. That's not so distracting. I was trying to ignore it. Um, (laughs) The sex therapy training you do after your master's degree, and it's totally separate, and it's not a degree program, but it's a ton of training and experience and supervision that you have to go to to become a certified sex therapist. So it was a huge commitment after getting my master's. Like what kind of supervision? (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, you, you hire a supervisor and you go talk about the cases, you know, and get input and sort of supervised as you're developing competency as a sex therapist. So we, I had to get supervision to become a therapist, too. That's part of the process and becoming licensed to do therapy because you work under supervision for a while. So like, like the equipment like of an internship, essentially. Sort of, except you're working in your own practice and then... Uh, you know, then you talk about the cases with your supervisor in separate meetings. In internship, you're usually on site with people when you're, you know, still in grad program, working towards getting your degree. You work on site and get supervised. So. Oh, man, that would way better. Better our, than what? Our internship was a year and a half, but you're still taking classes. So you really can't focus on, like, we sit down and go over the cases with our case doctor or hall doctor. But at the same time, it would have been way better to do that and then like say six months after graduation in practice i still have that person that would like that would have been so much easier a uh, transition because once you're you graduate and you get your license you're on your own like you just uh now what 
Hmm. Also, it was all at once for you, sort of like thrown out of the nest. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. confident as far as that you've been tested and tested and tested and tested, but at the same time that, like, oh, it would be really good right now because up until this moment, I've had someone to turn to and ask a question. And now yeah. it's just you. <laughs> yeah, suddenly, yeah. Before I call it practice. Right. Right. So how do, so now we've graduated, we've started. How do, when someone comes to you, how do those conversations go? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they're, they're kind yeah. of all over the map. I mean, in my own practice, I work only with couples. So that's a little different. A lot of people work with individuals, but I see only couples. Um, and I usually sort of dive right in, like, give me some background about your relationship, but then let's talk about what's bringing you in. And some people sort of go like right there and other people, you know, sort of circle around a little bit or sort of vague or take a while to get into sex. But they know by the time they're coming to see me that sex is one of their presenting concerns. So, uh, I, you know, I try to meet them where they're at and not push and, uh, and yet also try to get to, to what the problem is. Okay. Yeah. Do you find it more that men are the ones approaching you or females are, are, are women? I was probably called men, men and females. <laughs> men and females. Um, I, you know, I would, I would say it's half and half. I mean, just, you know, I also see same sex couples, so it's not like it's always heterosexual people coming in, but yeah, yeah I wasn't insinuating that there's, yeah, no, but it's, like it's <laughs> it can, sometimes it's, you know, men, sometimes it's women, sometimes it's the person more interested in sex, sometimes it's the person less interested in sex. It's kind of all over the map in terms of, you know, but one of my questions is always why now? Because normally they've, you know, they've struggled for a while, typically, sometimes even a decade or more. And then something, you know, what made this, you actually reach out for help at this point? Yeah, because they've been together, what, 10 years and you knew way before now that he wasn't any good. So why, why do you ride this out for... <laughs> For yeah. 10 years. Because I love him. <laughs> She's taking one for the team. <laughs> That's nice of her. Do you have you are you married yourself? Uh I'm not technically married uh yet. <laughs> I mean I was. I've been okay. divorced and then I've been repartnered for 12 years. So I'm you know I'm taking my time. But we're Re as soon as we get through COVID, I think we'll actually get married. So, oh, nice. oh yeah. Yeah. I'm finally, you know, we're past all the financial implications of it. So I'm ready. And now, of course, we can't go anywhere and we can't celebrate. And so so yeah. when I think of a sex therapist, like what I imagine is like that really old lady who used to have the TV show. Dr. Like, Ruth. Yeah, Dr. Ruth. <laughs> yeah. Like an accurate depiction of what's going on at your workplace or. Well, I only have sort of vague memories of listening to Dr. Ruth, I think on the radio or something. So I don't know exactly what she did in her actual practice. Like I just was aware she took those calls on the radio show, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but I guess in some ways it would be like that. I mean, it's talk therapy. I should make that clear. Some people are kind of confused. Like, is there sex that goes on in the office or people, you know, no, it's, all, it's just like therapy, talk therapy. But we, you know, it is explicit about sex. Of course, she also can't take sex out of the rest of the relationship, so it goes together with couples counseling. You know, we can't—I can't really distinguish between those, but it is—it's more explicitly about sex, and then often there's sort of homework, right? Because we're not going to change—you can't change sex just by thinking about it or just by talking about it. You got to go like do sure. some things differently. So, do you like partner up with like a like a regular couples counselor and like kind of work together, or do you do all all? Of yeah, no, I, I do all of it. I've had lots of training, couples counseling. That's sort of where I started. As, and then as I got my sex therapy training, and they're really, it used to be historically that they were sort of two distinct fields, but they really aren't. So I think anybody at this point, in fact, anybody would be certified as a sex therapist, you have to have couples uh, counseling training. Okay. I see. Yeah. So sometimes I refer out for individual work or if somebody's had a lot of trauma, some sort of specialist like that, that somebody might see in addition to the work i do okay okay so how long do you think it takes is there an, okay how is there an average like steve and i come in as a same-sex couple um and what is the general like you sit down and like hey it's going to take me three weeks to get steve over whatever his problem is for not <laughs> right because it's not you right <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Right, gotta be him. Yeah. Um, that would be the biggest disconnect is because if if one comes to you first, the other one, to me, like I don't have a problem, 
talking about sexual my sexuality and stuff like that because that's the the environment that I was raised in. Mm-hmm. You know, like last episode we were talking, and I could tell Steve was uncomfortable like about certain conversations that we were having, just because mm-hmm. you don't want that out there. So you run against a lot of brick walls. Well, first answer: How long it would take for us to get over this? Well, I, it, it's so hard to know. I, I keep meaning to figure out, you know, like look at the data of my practice and figure it out. My, my guess is that I see most people, most couples for three to six months. Oh, wow. Um, but about every other week. Okay. It's not <laughs> weekly. Um, so three months, that's only, what is that? Six sessions, six to 12. I mean, you know, I'm guessing yeah. some people are with me for yeah. a year or more, some people not so much, but it's like remodeling, you know, you've got to t- do some repair and you don't know until you take the drywall down, how deep does this problem go or how complex is it or what do they want mm-hmm. to achieve? So for some people, it's as simple as one visit, get some really good information and almost some permission and nothing's broken and off they go. And other people, it's way more systemic because it's related to their relationship issues too. Yeah. You and know. Then, some people it might be just psychological and some just oh it's all psychological well yeah but sometimes it's just oh i had no idea that's what you wanted right you do get a lot of it is like just communication breakdowns yeah sometimes it's i mean often there's communication breakdowns that happen sometimes i mean often it's a it's about having unrealistic expectations about sex Mm. so like oh you mean it's okay that we're not having penetrative sex like that's okay that counts it's like yeah okay (laughs) you know or um you know, if sex, it's sex isn't supposed to hurt. So keep pursuing some medical solutions to this because that's, you know, it, sometimes people don't know this stuff. So, you know, sometimes it's as simple as correcting expectations and giving them some good information and sending them off with some ideas. And, uh, you know, mostly it's a little more complicated than that because it is a lot about changing the mindset around what counts as sex. How does this work? What's actually a realistic expectation? Oh, absolutely. And then the thing that shows up all the time is desire discrepancy because there's always one person that wants more sex than the other. And often that's resulting in conflict or tension or, you know, difficulty for people. Yes, Steve. It's a partnership. You- right. Sure, take your own <laughs> advice. But uh, do, you, do you teach anything like, like tantric sex or anything like that? Or is that like outside of like the clinic or the, you know, clinical realm or? It's outside of it for me. I mean, I've had just a little bit of training, you know, sort of Tantra for sex therapists, but it was almost more about understanding more about it and also where we might refer people to, to a Tantric teacher or something like that. Okay. I would imagine that some sex therapists, though, have a lot of training in Tantra. Right. But again, they would only be talking about it with their clients, <laughs> you know, yeah. so any sort of tantric retreats or, you know, something that's going to be more hands on or something like that would not that would not be sex therapy. That would happen somewhere somewhere else. OK, oh, it's called an orgy. Well, I was, I was <laughs> watching a, there's a series on Netflix and there they had to kind of talk. They delved into like the tantric, the goods and the bads of it and how it's been kind of bastardized here in America. And What's it called? What, what series? Yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't know Gosh, I know, like a sting. That's the first time I'd ever heard of it. Mm. He's really big into. Yeah, he is big into it. It's the series is called Unwell. So they have like an episode on aromatherapy, an episode on people who drink breast milk, uh, an episode on tantric sex, an episode on you know all these different things, and they go into like why it's good, why it's bad, you know, just to get the perspective huh. on both sides. And it's it's really interesting. I watched. Yeah, I watched heard about it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hey. it's yeah. It came out. Some it came out this summer. Watches. It came out this summer. It's 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 well done. It's well done. It's um yeah. They're not you know for or against any of the um, I guess procedures or treatments or beliefs. They're just kind of documenting you know all the different just perspectives. like presenting the facts. Yeah, so this is right. Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not supposed to be like medical advice or you know like you know they're trash talking or you know, giving it propaganda or something anything like that. it's, it's just a very informative. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting, but yeah, they have an episode on tantric sex and this woman, like the people that come to her and then she kind of, you know, a lot of them have trauma or some type of, you know, childhood abuse that had happened. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a whole field of what's called sexological body work. And there's a lot okay. of different kinds of practices within that. And I'm not the expert on this, but um, it, that can be really useful for people with trauma you know, to be able to come in and have, you know, develop consent and boundaries of awareness and permission for pleasure and things. And, and that's more hands-on work uh, with the practitioner. 
Okay. So, and that, that doesn't happen in sex therapy, but that's that could be an ancillary or a different kind of approach people might take. Sure, sure. The well, best that, thing, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Hope Springs. Have not. That's, okay, that's sort of the closest portrayal I've seen of, of like what happens in my office. Uh, okay. Hope Springs. Oh. Who's in that? Um okay. Steve Steve Carell and Meryl Streep and um Tommy Lee Jones. Oh wow. Yeah. Huh? Sounds like it's a, big that's a, right, that's a solid cast. Came out right, on. it's a solid cast, and it's a cool movie. And it's you know they go to sort of this intensive retreat with the therapist, and they're talking about sex. And it, that it, there's a lot of similarities to the the couple and the the way he worked in therapy. So I don't know if and technically it was a sex therapist in the movie, but it looks like that. Sure. If, yeah. I want to go back into because I, I was funny that you touched on the expectations because that's. The first thing that pops into my head, and we've, I think we've touched on it either in regular conversations or in the past on episodes, that we're not taught what to do. <laughs> right. Like, like, don't touch that. Put that away. No one's even like, don't touch yourself. As don't, don't do this. And then all of a sudden you get on the, right before you start to, the hormones start to kick in, you sit down and you have that, that conversation. Maybe. And yeah. You never <laughs> have the conversation with your parents and all you do is sit and giggle, at least from right. my, you know, my perspective, because it's, it makes you uncomfortable now because it's the first time you're being exposed to that type of conversation. I remember fifth grade is when we watched like the sex ed video in school. Right. And I laughed the entire time until they removed me from that. I didn't, I didn't want to. <laughs> you had to be pulled out of the classroom. <laughs> the immature one because they were like, they were having, like cows have sex and all that stuff. Like, it, was just, it was so absurd. It was like half of it was in black and white. But for me growing up, when I would spend time at my grandma's house, I would read like old Western romance novels. Mm. Sounds crazy, but that was my first, other than like, um, I guess we call it a Skinamax, but Cinemax would have like Young Lady Chatterley or Emmanuel like movies late at night. But that was my first exposure to like sex. And that set the scene in my mind because right. in books, it's very vivid it's, it's in their in their descriptions yeah. and explanations. Like, wow, I can't wait to have sex. This is amazing. This is what my parents and everybody's doing behind closed doors. <laughs> right. This is <laughs> then you have sex for the first time. It's like, wait a minute. No <laughs> and I did not live up to that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was at I lost my virginity at 14. This individual was four years older, mm. but it was, I was very disappointed because one, I thought she was older. She should have one, not statutory rape me two <laughs> she have had more experience and mm. took me to the places where my, my imagination yeah. had set these expectations based on books and movies. And so then from that point on, I like vowed to like, I want to duplicate the books. And so I've, read the you know like uh manuals and stuff like that to the manuals it was like how to oh, sex like books. an ikea where, where, are you know. <laughs> where do you get the manual right <laughs> <laughs> like was it the joy of sex is the pie the, like the sex for or something yeah. actually actually the best one the best book for this is the guide to getting it on if you've ever heard of that it's an amazing I'm gonna book <laughs> he's gonna write it <laughs> i'm gonna write my own i started it but the introduction is gonna be the main premise is don't be a dude, but that's mm-hmm. like, it's, it's just don't do stupid stuff. And I think a lot of, if you don't know what you're doing, you get uncomfortable going into something. You start to make it all oh, this never happens. You become that type of guy. Mm-hmm. I've never been that guy early on. I would be like, Oh my God, I would, I, cause you're, you're having sex and you're excited. And uh, like every other teenager, you put in a couple strokes and like, oops, oh, now what? <laughs> that's gotta be a letdown for her. And then my ego comes into play. I'm like, oh, she's going to tell everybody. She's going to start talking about me and I become that guy. So I got to kill her. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, once I started running out of places to bury people, it was like, I need to change who I am. And once I stopped focusing on not having, because she's like, okay, I don't want to have an orgasm. I don't want to have an orgasm. Once I stopped thinking about that and it's like, man, maybe I should focus on giving her one. Once I figured that out and understood that, it switched like big time. But now... Yeah. As an adult, there's times where I will be so caught up in pleasure that I can't get off myself. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I uh, one thing I say to people all the time is being selfish is actually really, really important for good sex. I mean, you want to balance that with being giving, yeah. <laughs> but you want to be you want an experience where you can't get away from yourself and you're totally taking pleasure. That that makes you a compelling lover for your partner, but you also want to create that opportunity for them. So, oh, it's still, yeah, I enjoy yeah. it. Oh, uh, exponentially like it's sex is yeah. amazing from that so the, the sensation throughout is amazing but i'm not caught i'm more worried about 
I'm focused on the destination. I'm assuming the journey than I am the destination. The destination yeah. to me is secondary because I'm like, I have two hands. There's nothing I can't do for myself because I love me more than anybody else. And so I tend to focus on that. Yeah. Well, you were lucky. It's, I mean, learning from Western romance novels is a certain kind of thing. A lot of people are getting these expectations from pornography. You know, oh, so that's now, but when I was a kid, we're, we're I mean, I'm 45 years old. Pornography was only in magazines, VCRs weren't even out yet, right? Right, and so there wasn't like you run down to the video store and, and rent a, a movie or something like that. It was before the internet, so once in a while, you'd you know, your your buddy's older brother would have a Playboy or something like that, and even then, it was nowhere near what it is now, right? Right, so now people are exposed to so much porn, and that's shaping their expectations like that's what people yeah. want, or that's what I'm supposed to look like, or that's how long it should last, or that's what's supposed to happen, and you know, they, they think of it that's where I'm learning about sex, but. But no, it isn't. It isn't sex. It's fantasy. Agreed. Yeah. It's good That's to have good some point. kind of a template, but at the same time, realistically, what are you trying to do? Yeah, most of what you know, most of what's up there in porn is, is not realistic, right? Like sometimes there's amateur stuff or whatever that you know probably is, but it's uh, it's exaggerated for erotic effect. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, still, it's still entertainment at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. It's entertainment. It's not realistic. It certainly is not sex ed. Agreed. Yeah. But like you were saying too, sex ed is mostly how do you not get pregnant and how do you not get a disease? And how do you put right? a condom on? Yeah. yeah, maybe how you put a condom on and maybe how uh, you know how penetrative sex works a little bit, like how you make a baby or something like that. But it's not about pleasure or consent or communication or it's not about the journey, you know. Yeah, I think they taught it from that aspect, but then you get the religion and Christianity starts to come into play. Like, I don't want my kids knowing all this, but you're doing it now. Yeah. yeah. Like if you would educate better, one, people would be so much happier. So much happier in life. Like at the end of the day, relationships are sex. Until you're too old to not care or do it anymore. But in the early days, it drives a relationship. Yeah, our thoughts, uh, what we say in our in the field is that when when sex is working well in a relationship, you know, it feels like about twenty percent of your relationship. You know, a good solid piece. And when it isn't working, it feels like 80%. It just feels huge. It overshadows all the rest of your relationship that can be good. You know, it feels just really important. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you're, the nail, everybody's had, you've had those times of the relationships like, man, the last thing you want to do is have that good individual. The nail that <laughs> sticks up is the one that wants to be hammered. So. I like that. Um, you should have, I, have, I think that has to go on a t-shirt or something. Right? <laughs> right. I was about to, but I found out I didn't want to ask Confucius. Yeah. So do you, so my, my main question was, and I talked about it with my other side, do you see a correlation between ego and the ability to perform in men when they come into your office? Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Like, what's your theory? Sex, my ego is driven by my ability to perform. Oh, okay, okay. okay. The core level, my confidence and my ego and my mm -hmm. love for myself is because I know as a man I can deliver every single time. Yeah, and that's a major problem because <laughs> no, there's no way our ego or our sense of self-worth or anything else should be tied to what a particular body part does. Um, so I, I think I think that's a ton of pressure. You know, this culture puts so much pressure on men to like you should always want sex, always be ready to go. Perform. I can't even use the word perform. I can barely even make that come out of my mouth. Like this is not about performing. Um, it's not one person's job to know what to do or to make this happen. Uh, it's not our job to get our partner to come. I, I mean, my belief is that we're all responsible for our own pleasure, and we enlist our partner, and we have to equip them with the information they need to be effective lovers, because we're the only one that knows how it feels right now and what we need. Mm -hmm. So, and I do see, I think, more of that with men, uh, but I think that's culturally, you know, put on them. Uh, and I definitely have seen guys where one, inst one instance of having a trouble keeping an erection or something uh, and they get so wigged out and then they're preoccupied with that. And then they're totally twisted around the axle. And of course, then how can you possibly get aroused? Right. Like, so it's just so reinforcing sure. and they feel, you know, some of them just like, I don't know, emasculated or like, you know, feet cut out from under them um, under all that pressure. It's heartbreaking to me. 
But it's like, who, you know, how can you possibly enjoy sex if that's the, the kind of test you face every time? That makes sense. Yeah. I'm looking forward to erectile dysfunction, though, because it's. <laughs> <laughs> Need a night off or something or what? Every morning I wake up, it's rock hard. Like it is oh. entirely. It's, it's, and I look at it as I'm sacrificing my hairline for testosterone. <laughs> later on at I'm like, man, it's got to slow down at some point. Yeah, I suppose it will at some point. I hope so, but yeah, it, it, there's no signs of it. It's still like a teenager. Yeah. And well, it does. It does fluctuate with with age, with stress, with circumstances, with relationship. I mean, all kinds of things make our bodies respond differently. And so it's just so important to be adaptable, you know, and to realize, no, I'm not broken. Nothing's wrong. We just got to adapt to whatever we have now. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, come on. You need to adapt. I have no problem adapting. <laughs> I believe you. It's okay to bottom sometimes. It's all <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a give and take. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Gotta be flexible. Yes. Right. 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 And he won't let me push that hard behind his. Anyway, that's that's the <laughs> discussion. How would you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking up the conversation. Do you guys have? Yeah. Questions? So, with sex being everywhere in the media, do you feel like, mm. um, what, what age group is your are your clients and if? Um, they are different age groups. What are their issues? I'm really glad you asked that. So my youngest clients have been 22 and my oldest ones have been 80. 20, wow. 22. They don't even know what they're doing. They should just be right. Like, no, they don't. They, you know, they don't, but, um, and everything in between. I mean, I just see couples of all varieties of all ages of all lengths of relationship. I mean, it's just incredible how diverse <laughs> this work is. Even though I'm so focused on sex, it's like really, really diverse. So younger people um, often will be struggling with those psychological issues of performance and expectations. Um, sometimes younger people haven't had the experience or the education. And so they're dealing with, you know, sexual pain out of fear. You know, women can have a sort of clenching response that causes pain. Uh, but a lot of times it's about lack of, edu you know, lack of knowledge um, and expectations. And sometimes it's about struggles with desire discrepancy. Uh, at the, you know, the very oldest clients often have some sort of change in their sexual functioning, you know, so maybe they can't have penetrative sex anymore or ED is a problem or whatever it is. Um, but they're still looking to keep a vibrant sex life together with whatever parts are still working or how they can put that together. Um, mid age is all over the map, but a lot of that can be about stresses of life, careers and kids, or, you know, maybe the kids are finally leaving and it's time to pay attention to the relationship or they've lived you know, with their kids for 18 years and neglected their sex life, and now it's time to pay attention to it. Uh, certainly sexual functioning issues can show up then too. But I, I would say in my clients, I don't know, probably two thirds their bodies work okay. It's not about sexual dysfunction. Uh, it's more about sexual desire issues or discrepancies or stresses or not communicating about it or the, the way the expectations have set them up to feel like they're failing. Right. So we have a question from Ashley. Ashley asks, what's one thing you wish couples would listen to that they often don't seem to grasp? Ooh, good question. Mm. Gosh, I got to pick one thing there. But this couple should you listen right, to <laughs> <laughs> Um. You know, I, I'm tempted to say they should listen to their gut <laughs> instead of all the messages we get from society. Um, what listen to their own bodies and their own desires and what they know about themselves instead of comparing themselves to other people um, or whatever's portrayed in TVs and movies or pornography. Um, and I also think they should really listen to each other, you know, like have conversations about what are you actually experiencing? What might be in your way? How can I help you solve that? How can we work together? What, you know, how are we going to, in terms of sex, how are we going to craft a sex life that's really engaging and fulfilling for both of us? So when do you, let's say you're in a relationship like 10 years, when do you pull that trigger as far as, because after, if you don't say something for the first, you didn't say nothing for the first 10 years, why are you saying something now? When do you think that that should come into play? Because if we get together and it's amazing the first couple of times, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then later on down the road, you've, you're getting tired of oatmeal. Yeah. I mean, that definitely happens. I, I, 
but this, you know, the sooner you speak up, the better, right? But even if it's been 20 years, it's not too late. I get plenty of people coming into therapy who, you know, they've been struggling for a really long time. And now, you know, the kids are leaving or whatever's going on that I can't, I can't quite do it like this anymore. We got it. We got to address it. Uh, but it's never too late. But there are shifts in relationships over time. When we when we're with when we're with our new love, and you take a picture of your brain. I mean, Helen Fisher did this research. Your whole brain lights up, right? The brain chemistry is nuts. There really is this sort of infatuation or honeymoon period. And after about eighteen months, when you think about your love, the only part of your brain that lights up is the part that keeps your grocery list. So, you know, there's sort of this tide we have to fight <laughs> to keep sex engaging, to make sure we're putting some energy into it, that we're, you know, investing it to make it interesting. Not like it constantly has to get better. Uh, I think it ebbs and flows a little bit. But if you're feeling unsatisfied or disconnected or bored, uh, you know, speak up. But, you know, but don't do it as a challenge to your partner or a confrontation. It's more like, hey, I want our sex life to be as good as it can be. Let's, how do we do this together? You know, what could we be doing? Do you feel like the problems are different, like across cultures? Yes. Um, I mean, certainly there are because there's diff different messages uh, that people have gotten culturally, right? Um, so I, in my practice here, you know, I'm in Seattle, and so I'll get a lot of people from India who've had absolutely no sex ed education and frequently struggle to even consummate a marriage. So they're not even allowed to be around women to like a certain age, right? There's right, right. And there's been no sex ed and it's been so built up. If, if they've heard anything about it, it's scary. And so a lot of these women are having, you know, what's called vaginismus, which is this clenching response out of, you know, sort of negative anticipation, which, which means they can't have penetration. Uh, and so I see that more frequently in Indian couples, for instance. So that's coming from this lack of information and openness, right? Um, and then, of course, just family culture, religious culture, different, you know, different environments give you different messages. And, and yeah, I sort of think of it, you know, we all have baggage, right? It's like, who packed your bags? <laughs> it's kind of important to look at what you got taught, you know, what do you want to keep? What do you not want to keep? Um, but that's part of what we have to take apart. I see. That was a good question. Yeah, I was like, never even thinking about that because. What, what are your experiences with like Asian couples? Um, I, I'm trying to think if I've had, I, I've had plenty of couples where one person is Asian. Um, I'm trying to think about, I must have had a couple where both is, but I'm, they're not coming to mind. Um, but again, I think depending on where they're from and what their, their background has been and where they raised there and immigrated or, or, you know, are they second generation or something? Um, often often Asian families are also not talking about sex, right? So there hasn't been that lack of knowledge. Uh, but I haven't seen as much like vaginismus in, in that population. But, you know, again, this is just like my office in Seattle. <laughs> it's not, yeah. I wouldn't say it's totally representative. It's just what's shown up for me. Hmm. Yeah, because I dated, I'm sorry, uh, she was an older woman when I was a teenager, old, mid, mid teen. No, I'm sorry, late teens. That sounded creepy. I was like 18 or 19. <laughs> she was Caucasian and her ex-boyfriend was um okay, he was, it was a current boyfriend. But anyway, <laughs> she, <laughs> and the reason she strayed when we met at work, but the reason she strayed because he was Asian and uh -huh. he would kind of chastise her for being vocal and audible during sex yeah. because he was raised and his culture was like, you need to be docile and just basically serve the man. And the reason she strayed and was basically, she loved him, cared about him, but she, she wasn't fulfilled sexually because she was just supposed to just lay there and be his, at, you know, at his yeah. back of the wall and, and couldn't yeah. ask questions. And so you get that disconnect of thinking, I like that you brought the, up about Asians that he's expecting one thing, whereas an Asian woman might be expecting something else and they're going right. to have conflicts. And if you don't have those conversations and you're not used to that, you may be, I, I'd be afraid to offend my partner, because I've, I've been there too, and I've been in relationships where like, oh, I wonder, because as you explore and have different partners, you experience different pleasures or different mm -hmm. levels of pleasure, and like, oh man, maybe you just tried this. I was always afraid, not, I don't care now, but in the past, like if I bring this up, she's going to think, oh, you want me to do it like so-and-so does or something like that. So I think, mm -hmm. 
That could be yeah, it can start to you're like, oh, you're comparing me to some past lover right. or something. But yeah. yeah, what you're trying to do is say, hey, I'd like to invigorate this a little bit. Could we try this or that? Or this is part of what I learned about what I like, you know? Yeah, like yeah. in your butt. Not right. to... But it's not like it, you know, every Asian person has the same background or something, right? Like that's mm -hmm. it's one factor in somebody's background, but we have to sort of unpack all the different messages they would have gotten from their family, their community, their religion, their ethnicity, whatever it is. And how is this at play with what they're experiencing now? And then how does it butt heads maybe with their partner? Um, yeah. You know, because people, have, you get two two different people, two different histories, and sometimes those really clash. And then so as you get older, you I think for females too, because you don't, men are assholes. <laughs> and you don't know how many men in the past that treated her like she didn't please her and do all this stuff, but you've got to, to overcome i think that's where like mm -hmm. they have the couples therapy like you were saying you're a couple yeah. therapy, therapists first and then you delve into this because sometimes you just got to solve it's just she just may just be afraid of intimacy because every single time she's experienced it it was not desirable like i right I was aching this i when i have sex i give you the sex that you need not the sex that you ask for because some women <laughs> want to be no you don't want to be pounded you just you just never got off before so you want it to be as hard and fast as possible because you may not have the longevity to get to where you want to get. Hmm. So I'll go slow and just, just like ease into it. Yeah. Just like, oh my God, that's not, I didn't realize that that's what I wanted. And so I get a lot of, um, a lot of passing out and a lot of crying throughout oh. my history. But not, but not the crying is like, oh my God, it's sad, but just the emotional release because they've went yeah. for so long and they've never been like their body trying to get that poison. I was like, I, I heard on the Howard Stern's like, I get the poison out. And like you, when you're pent up and all that stress, Sometimes the only way you can get through that is you got to you know, have it sex long enough. Not necessarily the orgasm, but just the ability, the ability to relax. Because a woman, mm -hmm. needs, for lack of a better explanation, should submit. And that's a, that's, a, that's a biological thing. She needs to be able to submit, whereas the man has to stay alert. And that's why there's that. Like in order to have sex and an orgasm, you have to have a balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. a woman's mm -hmm. in the state of parasympathetic the entire time in order to receive. I kind of babbled, but... Well, you're also sort of touching on, um, you know, the prevalence of trauma. Sexual trauma is just all over the place, right? And so not only just assholes as boyfriends or something, but I mean, like, actual sexual assault or molestation or something. And that's that's a huge barrier for people, you know, men and women. So that's another thing that people are bringing in their baggage that that might need to get unpacked. And that's that's where an individual therapist might be really yeah. helpful if somebody hasn't dealt with that yet. Women to to come out and say I've been abused, but for a man that's went through the same thing, I think that's got to be deep seated. That would, that would be a very difficult conversation for me to have in front of my partner, let alone in front of a complete stranger that I'm paying to work through that. And so I think that's, that's why I was curious on how long it would take because yeah, it may take three months to even scratch the surface and crack that shell to even find out what it is. I think, but once they, they yeah. come clean, I'm sure that the relationship is exponentially better. Right. Sometimes it does take a while. Like we're talking, you're meeting with people and, and it takes a while for them to have enough comfort to like finally say the thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I'll, So we've I'll, got a question yeah. from Ashley and she asks, how do you help a couple facilitate trust to help one or both parts move past prior trauma? Um, I, I not quite sure if she means trauma in the relationship, like infidelity or something like that. Or if you're talking about prior tr like sexual trauma that one person sort of brought in um but let's say it's the let's say it's the second one sexual trauma that somebody's had before um first i usually recommend that if you haven't done some individual therapy or some work on that to process that that's really useful and then it's got to just move really slow right the per some person that's had trauma before needs to have a lot of control um so they can relax. They have to have control over what's done to them. They shouldn't be like wondering what's going to happen. That's going to be really, really triggering. So trying to proceed slowly and to ask for things and to be really learn to tune in. Do I want this or do I not? And how do I, um, how do I speak up about that and ask for what I want, but say, no, no, that's, that's not what I want. Like it's a gentle process of gradually um, learning, learning to relax or like you were saying, Jeremy. Makes sense. So aside, go ahead, no. so aside from um, prior sexual abuse, you find issues with people who have just, they come from abusive backgrounds, 
um, that doesn't have anything to do with sexually. <laughs> yeah. Never. Oh, I mean, all, all the time, right? Because none of us have perfect parents. So we've got that stuff, you know, in, and some people it's really bad, of course, <laughs> like capital T trauma, sometimes it's lower case. But, you know, it results in, I mean, it results in so many different kinds of things. Some people um, come out of their childhood being total people pleasers. I've got to keep the peace. I need to accommodate. I've got to keep mom calm or whatever. And so they're not tuned into what they want or themselves or constantly worried about their partner. Um, some people come out replicating the kind of stuff they were, grew up with. So they're rageful or have tempers or get mean, um, you know, and know how to hurt their partner when they're triggered. Um, you know, we're, we're either re re perpetrating the things that happened to us, or we've learned coping mechanisms that show up and keep us sort of blocked from our own desires or ability to be open. You know, people have experiences around what did their family do around conflict? You know, could their parents have a disagreement or the adults in their household have a disagreement and figure it out and work it out and have repair. And this all got modeled. That's not usually what people got. They either got conflict avoidance, and nothing's ever talked about, or they had fights, you know, and they either come out with one or the other. And we have to develop the ability to have successful conflict with our partners. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, there's just so many different things we get from our upbringing that impact how we're going to be in relationship and that we might really have to work to change. Because your only vision of love is the love you see between your parents or maybe your grandparents. But then, it's yeah, and there's a vision, you know, there's a love you got from your parents or didn't. Right. Like there's all these different messages around it that are modeled and experienced for you. And we bring that forward. And it, if we haven't really ever looked at it, it can be kind of surprising. Like, oh, and I didn't really put it together. The way I'm treating my partner now is how my mom used to treat my dad or whatever it was. Oh, that's how I am. Because my <laughs> I was raised by my stepdad since I was three, but he was you know, he's earned the crown. But he would never argue. I've never seen He only raised his voice one time to my mom in my entire life. Mm. she was going to die moments later because I'd never experienced that man in, in my, in my entire life. I didn't leave until I was like my 21, but he would just, she would be upset about something would just scream and holler and all that stuff. And he would just sit calmly and just listen. Mm. It would drive her insane. Uh. But now, <laughs> I am now I was like, man, like he didn't even holler back. He didn't do it. He's like, I'm thinking he's just a good listener. <laughs> and then, so as I would in relationships growing up, I would be like, I would, just would I wouldn't fight. Mm. And then you notice that when they, why, aren't you, why don't you react? Why, don't you, why should I react? You're upset right now. I'm just listening. You want me to listen, so I'm going to listen. That's how I interpreted what he was doing versus he just probably just he was either fell asleep at some point or just didn't care. But <laughs> Well, it was probably shut down. You know, yeah. for a lot of people in the face of anger, it's like, you know, they, they basically withdraw. They shut down. They're, you know, they're, they're not quite thinking. They're probably not calmly listening. Uh, they're probably yeah. having a different kind yeah. of reaction. Yeah. You know, probably, <laughs> she was being who she was, but yeah, it was like he was yeah keeping the peace and it's like it's not, it's not worth the fight. And as you would have you know as an adult, I would have arguments with a in a relationship, and you realize if I say something now, either to be funny, to be spiteful, or just get out of the situation, you're going to pay for that comment for the rest of that relationship. It's going to mm -hmm. every single fight, and that's why like, maybe he just he's been there before, and so I that's how I am in an argument. And then the relationship I'm in now, we've never had an argument mm -hmm. in ten years. Would you say that's healthy? Absolutely. That you've never. Why fight? Go. We calm down. Talk about it later. Okay. We'll have like, oh, well, you know, because you know, you have what's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Oh. Like I know what's wrong with Steve, but still, I still keep on asking Steve what's wrong. But you know, what I'm saying it's like because I care. Yeah. And you learn like, ah, just let it go. But you go back and revisit the. Yeah, yeah, the of issue. course. So we'll talk about it later. Yeah. But in that moment, because I have a silver tongue, I love to talk shit. Oh my gosh. If I say anything <laughs> out of anger or to be spiteful. I really don't want to pay for that because I'm going to be vicious. I'm going to be mm -hmm. mean about it. And that's not necessary in a relationship. If you care right. about the person, right. don't be mean. That's one thing I've learned along the way because I still want to have sex with you later. So, yeah. That's good. That yeah, I mean, it's good that you can recognize your skill at being mean and then refrain from doing that because that's that just causes so much damage. But well, you know, and I, I don't think relationships you have to fight. But I do think you have to be able to handle disagreements. That doesn't have to be a fight, but at least it's got to be a conversation. And the problem is either, you know, inflicting yourself on other people and yelling and all the stuff or not speaking up about what you need. Because that's the other thing is people just be these people pleasers. And so nothing's about me and I can't speak up. And, 
and eventually people hit a wall. They can't do that forever. It's not sustainable. But that's a lot of people come into the counseling with that. They've never really thought about what they want, or certainly in sex. You know, it's never been about me. I've never thought about it that way. I've never spoken up. And all of a sudden now, of course, I'm not interested in sex, right? So it's time to learn <laughs> what do I actually want? How can I take up some space in this relationship and not just be the, the people pleaser? And as a, yeah, that's a big part of conversations we had early on in the relationship because I, <clears throat> no one can make me happy but me. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and tell Steve I like this, I like that, I like that. But to put it on another person to make me happy is one is ridiculously narcissistic and, and selfish. And so we agreed. I can't, I don't, I may know what makes her happy, but deep down to the core, I don't think most people can even truly tell you what makes them happy. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting by myself and minding my own business. People are like, what'd you do all this weekend? I did absolutely nothing. Like seriously, like, oh, I did nothing. I just sat around. I did nothing. I'm, normal, I'm okay with it. I was raised an only child. But we agreed, I will make myself happy. She will make herself happy. Mm -hmm. And we just agreed to share our happiness together. Right. And it changed the whole dynamic of, of relationships. And like it's, if I were to learn these things sooner, her and I probably would not be together. So there's that bittersweet of, I wish I would have known this sooner to save certain relationships, but at the same time. Oh, but then you wouldn't have met your current partner because you'd still right. be with the old one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, it, it's, it's a weird dynamic on how that is. Like, I'm not comparing our relationship to anybody else's. Our relationship is separate and distinct. But it's one of those things we agree to make each other or make ourselves happy and just share it together and whatever happens happens like we yeah. have, both have our own spaces we both have it like you can, if you want to go and do whatever for the weekend go and do it that's what it's whatever i'll be here when you get back yeah and a lot of people have issues with communicating just that and sometimes you, it's not sexual it's just like man i'm tired of being around this person all the time they're up my butt i just want some space well relationships are ideally a balance between autonomy and togetherness you know and those are sort of at odds with each other but we have to straddle that um, we don't want to do absolutely everything together and have no, you know, no air between us, but we also don't want to be totally separate where there's no real connection. So, yeah. you know, we want to be able to come together and go apart. What she say? So, Ashley says, I guess I can out myself as your other half. <laughs> 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 have that ego and are uh, correct we don't fight or have any lingering resentments you're an incredible listener and you don't give yourself enough credit that's, oh, so sweet. that's sweet yeah i told her to say that <laughs> getting some on the air kudos you know, right? but it's more yeah like it's it's yeah like i and i try to be as honest as possible on the show I don't, I, this is my therapy now like this is yeah i love the this but it's driving me nuts because my uh, my other half of the show is down and out. I'm and I've so, got some personal things going on. A hacker, a hacker uh, infected my computer with ransomware, and it was like, oh no! It just feels like super violating, and it's and on top of that. Like today was the first day I had, I had meat in like the last two months, and so it makes me kind of groggy. And I I'm heard you saying that before <laughs> because I was waiting yeah. to come in. Did well, you get your computer stuff back? Uh no, well they want to ransom. Uh, they want they want me to pay them to decrypt yeah. all my files, and I I refuse to take any part in that. I'm just gonna okay. you know, I'm just gonna wipe the computer and start over and just get some better. Yeah, but it's crazy. I mean, whatever they did, they were so just quick and clean about it because they went yeah. in, they disabled my antivirus, they disabled my firewall, they encrypted all my files. So you don't know how they got in there. I have no clue. Well, I have an idea because uh, I was running it as a server. So it was a media server for me to share movies like so I could watch my movie collection anywhere and share it. And then also as a, a file transfer server, mm -hmm. which were both uh, password protected. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I know I have a, an idea that they got in through my FTP server, but I don't know how they targeted my IP address to begin with. I don't know how they tracked my password or how they got in and disabled my antivirus or my firewall like whoever it was i mean they clearly are not a novice and they were very yeah. i mean i mean they were a skilled practitioner of their their craft which is hacking but right i don't uh i don't plan on paying the ransom or anything like that everything that i have on there is replaceable it's just going to take time yeah. did you pay the ransom with this told jenny no because she's replaceable <laughs> as well no, I'm just yeah, kidding. You <laughs> Uh, it, depends on, 
Mm-hmm. Now I know. It always depends. <laughs> it always depends on how much they want. Because uh, I mean, I I have a very limited income right now, so. You want to keep hearing that these ransomware people are hitting like municipalities and hospitals and you know places that can't just walk away from their systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patient records and all that yeah. kind of very confidential stuff. And you know the the de- their downfall is a lot of these places are running like really outdated forms of Windows XP, which no longer ma- is supported right. in Windows at all. And yeah. they're at risk, you know, at higher risk because it's it's so hard to update systems like that that are you know that. Right. Because they can't shut down the system for a day or anything. So they're stuck. If you let me yeah. invade, I want to give you a virus. <laughs> oh, uh, well, yeah, I guess sickle cell doesn't transfer. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> sickle cell carrier. I don't have sickle cell. No, I'm curious. No one in my family's ever had sickle cell, so there's a good chance that it's not within. But I think I'm more. I have B blood type, so more. Mongolian Asian than I am by African. I, I don't know how any of it works. The first time I heard about sickle cell was in Full Metal Jacket, so my <laughs> knowledge is extremely limited. Uh, T Boss and TLC has sickle cell. That's okay. what that's what, these, that's what oh. kind of slowed them down. Yeah. Wow, I had no idea. The sickle cell crisis is, I guess, is like one of the most painful things I ever go through. I just yeah, my I, brother-in-law is an ER doctor, and he talks about uh, having a lot of. He sees it, and he just says it's awful. What what happens? What's the so you're Basically, your blood cells are like donuts, for lack of a better description. And yeah. so what will happen is they'll start to sh- sh- like a sickle. That's okay. why it's called sickle cell, because it looks like the edge of a sickle, that shape. Okay. And so what will happen, instead of these little donuts going through your bloodstream, they'll go into a crescent shape and lodge. Oh. And so now you have tiny capillators, so the blood's backing up. I mean, it's still getting through, it's still getting circulation, but blood will just stop circulating into the areas and start dragging along the inside of your blood vessels and stuff like that. Really? Okay. And so it... it Decreases the blood flow, and then eventually those they'll pop back out and do their thing once the blood mm. the liver filters everything out. But it's they believe it's a genetic um, mutation to fight malaria because anybody who has sickle cell mm. malaria. Oh, that's huh. a, so, interesting. Theory. Yeah, there's a random shit that I know, but yeah, I'm trying to think if I ever knew that, but I don't. I don't remember. Well, yeah, I don't even know because because it, it's a cultural thing. Again, no one in my family on the black side has ever had it, but at the same time, it's something that I've been exposed to because of that. Yeah. It's pretty much Middle East or like tropical places where there's high, like lots of mosquitoes because the mosquitoes also transmit it. And so the we're trying to transmit malaria, not sickle cell. Right. So. Can you test for whether you, you somehow carry it? Yes, that you can. And so, which I think that I would, I think there needs to be more genetic testing overall. But that's just my perspective as far as mutations and because of what I know and what mm-hmm. I've seen and stuff like that. There'd be a lot less. Just, and it sounds, uh, that's, that's kind of, I'm kind of shooting myself out loud. Because you should not have children because of this. But I also think it's kind of cruel if you don't know what you may pass on to your child. Mm-hmm. Because your child has to live with that, not you. Right. That's a whole nother whole nother conversation. That's a whole ethics conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> you watch the show like little the with the little people i don't want to say the yeah the other word but then they have children yeah. there's high probability that your children are going to be that way too yeah and then you sit there and watch them in their show and they complain about oh when i was growing up this was hard and like why would you put that on another child that's that's so cruel to do on purpose but well, dwarfism isn't like autism or you can still have a fulfilling life you just can't be right, an NBA player. To... <laughs> <laughs> you just can't what? <laughs> an NBA player. <laughs> was it Spud? Was it Muggsy Bowes like five two? Okay. Yeah, I don't think but anybody in that you gotta show be is exceptional. Five, two. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be exceptional. So you're exceptional and tall, dwarf as well. Five two. Well, yeah, but you get you dunked as well. well I, yeah. I mean, I struggled to get rid of it five eight. So it's like it was, <laughs> that's how amazing it was. Yeah, I'm not even touching in that. So. You're white, but that's another. Hey, Woody Harrelson did it. Yeah, that was CGI. <laughs> 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 uh, but this show was White Man Can't Jump. Like, it right, was, yeah. it called that. <laughs> so yeah, we we straight off topic. Yeah. Yeah. Bizarre. Like, Only because Aaron. Steve was. I would look Sickle in the camera, sound. and he was he was just sitting there all sad. Yeah, it's like. Oh. Yeah, it's and I knew not your fault. You know, I knew coming very in. Very interesting. I I was totally engaged in listening. I was just. 
kind of just no questions so. slightly divided yeah. yeah well i don't really know i don't really have a lot of questions about the i was just kind of taking it all in you uh-huh. know it's my uh my household was very like it just didn't get talked about nothing sexual yeah. got talked about so i was just kind of in the dark for until like it wasn't even a family member like my dad was renting a room out to this guy he's like you ever seen a porno before i was like no he, was, <laughs> he gave me all these pornos and i was like you know 14 or whatever and i was like holy crap this is so that's where thing. that's where you got your first view of it yeah 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 exactly and i was like i gotta get more of this in 10 days later <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> did yeah. it uh did it affect your expectations do you think definitely definitely yeah. um i definitely had like i thought i was supposed to have like a 10 inch long and like i was like you know, yeah. felt inadequate for a long time, and yeah, until I learned like that's not, you know, that's not necessarily normal or what nope. everybody wants. So I've kind of gotten over it since then. But yeah, kinda. He's got very. I high would still. I, I. I. I'd still like. <laughs> wouldn't mind like something massive. Ten more inches. It would still be cool to have a ten incher. I'm not gonna lie, but I've gotten. I've. I've mitigated that. But I'll say this because when I was thinking about, because I'm, I'm dead serious about writing a book. But it was one of those things I thought about the size because that's the and I'll ask you in a minute because the size matter. But from my perspective, if you line up all the women I've ever had in my life, the pleasure of, they go from crackhead skinny to voluptuous. And I know for a fact that they're not all I'm I'm not hitting the same depth on a voluptuous woman just because of stuff in the way as I am with a with a skinny individual. And even as I've gotten older, I've gained weight and things that are, are in the way that weren't in the way. And so I don't think really, from my perspective, size truly matters. Because if you know what you're doing, it changes the entire game. Because I know that I'm not going, the skinny girl is getting more penetration than the, the voluptuous woman is just because of size and what's what's going on in the way. So, Well, and you got to keep in mind, for most most women... Somewhere between, I don't know, 70% and 95% need clitoral stimulation to have an orgasm. So it's not about what's happening on inside anyway. So that's that's part of why I don't think size matters much. That's a good point. Yeah. Yes, it's all about the outside. So, um, yeah. So do you find women a little bit more complicated when it comes to... Also that, yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, guys, in general, it's kind of straightforward. It's there. You can see it, you know, easy access. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, female anatomy is a little more complicated. And uh, women may not be even as familiar with it themselves because you can't see, you know. It's not something you've grown up, look down, and, oh, there we go. I know what to do with that. Um, mm-hmm. But basically, you know, it's it's not about size because it's just about any two people with whatever their anatomy is. And you just got to do, you got to just make that work. You know, it's not, it's not about anybody should be different. It's like we got your body and how it works. I got my body and how that works. And what do we do with this? You know? Right. Yeah. Cause it's not always male, female across the board. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the communication, the trust mm-hmm. and just um, pay attention. I think that's the biggest thing, the body. And I learned this as, as a chiropractor is like, pay attention. The body's talking to you. Mm-hmm. You just gotta listen. It's all there. Like when I sometimes when I'm with a patient, I'm like, man, like I just I don't know why, but this I need to focus on this area. Mm. And it has nothing to do with power. I haven't touched them. I haven't done anything. But just something tells me I need to focus on that. And if you go into sex the same way, just go with the flow. Don't think about it. Turn your brain off and just have fun. Is is a big and it has nothing to do like yeah, it's like size or anything like that. Because I've had amazing sexual encounters and like yeah, no penetration even happened. Right. Right. I talk to I talk to couples all the time. I think like think about sex like you're going to the playground. Okay, it's the outing that counts. It's not whether you go down the slide. It's not about having an agenda. It's not about you know we got to do this and then this and then it's this. It's like we just show up and we figure out what do we actually want to do right now and then what do we want to do next and how long do we want to stay and the whole the whole thing is just fun and you can't fail it. <laughs> but that's not how a lot of people approach sex. It's sort of, you know, they approach it like this has to happen and then this and then this and we have penetration and orgasm and we're done. Uh, and that's such a limiting way to think about sex. She cleans up. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not an actual playground. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I'm not saying I actually go to the playground. Right. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I was going through, I kind of like, 
in, pre- in preparation for this, I was thinking, oh, like all the weird times that, or things that I've done. And I had uh, with about my very, yourself, very yeah, first, yeah. no, my very, very first <laughs> girlfriend. And we were virgin we met. But it was like we had sex in a tornado slide at night. We snuck out because in my day, you didn't have, like your parents were home at night. There was no cell phones. Like it was, you had to be clever and creative to to navigate the sexual world in the eighties. Because, I mean, you had like the the chip party line, but no one could afford a party line because it was like paying for two phone bills. But anyway, <laughs> we snuck out, had sex at the, the elementary school on the tunnel slide. But I got a mosquito bite on my penis, and I was the last time we had sex <laughs> oh, outside. No, talk about you think it itches on your, you think it itches on your arm? That um, would be a deterrent. Yeah. It would be ridiculous. <laughs> So, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Ouch. So like the whole time you were talking about the slide, like, oh my god, I have a bad experience. It wasn't right, right, right. bad association. It after. It was like, man, mm. it's cool. But the fact that that'll teach you to forget your mosquito spray. Right? <laughs> Rub it on your penis. <laughs> oh, that doesn't stop like that at all. <laughs> that Maybe some me. or something. <laughs> <laughs> me. Oh. Right. So Ashley <laughs> asked the question. She wants to know. What are your thoughts on schools teaching abstinence? Mm. Um, well, the research, not that I'm totally an expert on this or whatever, doesn't back up <laughs> that that works. Um, abstinence is going to be the only surefire way not to get pregnant or to get a disease is to not have general contact with, <laughs> with the partner. But, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in full sex education. It doesn't make kids have more sex. I think information actually helps them. You know, and then they're going to be protected if they if they do. I don't, I don't know the stats on the average age kids start being sexual or teenagers or whatever, but it, you know, it's before eighteen. Oh yeah. And, and by withholding the information and not equipping them with this, we're it does that's not going to deter them. It's just going to make them ill-equipped to take care of themselves. I agree because they're going to. It's it's biological. Mm-hmm. One day it just turns on. I want to put this in everything. Whether yeah, I mean, and people used to get married at 13 or 14 years old, right? right? Like this was a natural part of life in your teenage yeah. years. And the, those drives are all still there. The whole point of life mm-hmm. is to make more life. Yeah. And you can do all these and snip whatever and do whatever to try to stop it, but it's going to happen. That's why we're populated because it feels so good. It feels good for a reason. Whether you believe in evolution or, or creationism, it's there for a reason. Yeah. I think what happens is you, you get people who do other things. And it's like when... Um, I had a friend whose sister had talked about like it's I'd heard like the younger generations if it's not vaginal it's not sex and so they're doing everything else except and that's dangerous on so many levels I mean it's it, everything else is also fun but I would say it's sex oh, yeah, <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but this, I definitely have this people have this idea that somehow intercourse is so different than everything else and it, it isn't it's just like one it's one big playground so yeah like I try to convince you like just what you put in your butt it's not sex bro yeah <laughs> exactly because <laughs> I want to show my love this yeah yeah do you ever get any like sex addicts People have to constantly have sex no matter what. I see. I define an addict. Because. Yeah. Well, it, it, um, as a certified sex therapist, there's not the research to, to, to back up that term. Like I don't use the term sex addict, mm-hmm. but I do think of it as, you know, the, the term I'll use is out of control sexual behavior. So people can use almost anything in some way that's sort of compulsive or out of control or, you know, some outlet for something not dealing with something else. But I think a lot of what has been labeled sex addiction are people that have just going out and have sex with a lot of people, and it's kind of handy to call it an addiction instead of a decision. Um, or, you know, I think things get blamed on that as if it's an illness when it isn't. But then I know there are also people that really struggle with the whole shame cycle around their porn use or whatever, and then it drives more, and you know, it can be problematic for people. So I guess whatever anybody struggles with as a problem you you treat as a problem with them but i don't do that work since i just work with couples like i've got other people i refer to that help people that are dealing with that now and then sometimes i'll see couples where that's been historically part of what's happened you know and they're trying to figure out how are they going to work on their sex life you know and not have this person go to porn or masturbation or whatever they were doing at least you know so much 
there's nothing wrong with masturbation. I want to just say, like even in a relationship, like <laughs> plenty of people with a really good sex life still masturbate. That's fine. It's just about whether it's keeping you from work or keeping you from your partner or keeping you from, you know, doing what you need to do. Yeah, but it can like, you know, interfere with other parts of your life. I mean, yeah, and that's where it starts to be problematic, right? It's, it, yeah. it can be problematic behavior. I just I personally, I don't use the term addiction. True. But then you got to look at what's where is that coming from? Is somebody using this as stress relief and they're just not coping with the other parts of their life? Have they never developed those skills? Like what's the, the slippery slope that kind of has them go that way instead of dealing with it more constructively? So there are definitely therapists that work with that. It's just not my, sure. it's right. just not my work. Well, that's, yeah, I think of sex addiction. I think of the Chuck Palahniuk story of Choke, the Sam Rockwell movie. But you know, yeah. like you know, people going to meetings and you know they're having sex with everyone they meet, and they they're having trouble like you know digesting their own their own behavior. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. So again, I I call it out of control yeah. sexual behavior, and you'd be I'm looking. looking uh, dude from X Files, wasn't he? Oh, supposedly David Duchovny, yeah, yeah, supposedly. So yeah, I don't. I can't see that being something to be addicted to because we'd all like to have sex all day long. If you don't, then that's you. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and like some of these people that are just sort of like cheating on their partners or something, and it's like, oh yeah, I got a sex addiction. It's like, no, you're just cheating. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got a, you got maybe a character flaw or a uh, or some sort of coping you're not doing or some sort of communication mm -hmm. you're not doing. Glad you brought that up because I was thinking too. Um, I've always been on the the thought process of if you are sick and you want to have sex with other people, just tell your partner. How? What are your thoughts on like polyamory, mm -hmm. and that and like extra relationship relationships? Yeah, that that comes up or something that you or against or oh yeah no i don't have any stand on it at all I, I see people in open relationships poly relationships monogamous whatever people choose um or are i mean some people really identify as poly almost like a sexual orientation i mean or you know an identity mm -hmm. like they, this is just how they are and want to be and um and of course, the problem is if you've got somebody who really wants to be monogamous and somebody who doesn't, that's right. gonna, you know, <laughs> that might be the end of that relationship, you know. But yeah, instead of instead of cheating, talk to your partner and sort of talk about these things and see if you work that out. Yeah, because she maybe wanted to have sex with somebody at the office, and instead of you, she was being faithful to you because she thought that's what you wanted. And you guys could have cracked open a whole other level of relationship that you both wanted, but you neither of you communicated about it right. because certain things are taboo. You're afraid to bring those up, like if like if you wanted a threesome or you were bisexual, but you just, you repress those, and then it turns into something else in your life. Mm -hmm. you can't cope with that. I think communication has to be the core. Kind of all comes down to that open communication yeah. about what 100%. you actually want, what you're actually thinking, and trying to figure out if you can do that together or not. You know, some sometimes this stuff is deal breakers for sure, uh, but that's okay. That just means you, you can't. These two people can't work in relationships. Yeah, but you gave me the opportunity to say yes or no versus right, right. Instead of stealing your choice, right? Like I'll just do right. it on the slide, and you won't know. And yeah. So I, I dated a girl yeah. when I was in Arizona, and she told me a story. She's like, yeah, my ex-boyfriend, who I had, it was in prison at this time, but she like he wanted me to lay under a glass table, or he wanted to lay under a glass table while she shit on the table. And these are real stories. I'm not just making this yeah. up for, for a conversation. I was like, and, and deep down in my mind, I was like, I think she's low-key asking me for something but she just want to come out and communicate it it would have been a no wouldn't have been a deal breaker for the relationship but it would have been a no for that thing but like yeah yeah like, what are you getting at and that's how my mind was like well, she's just trying to set me up for something hmm. but she may say that to 10 different guys and then one guy latches on and then they have the best relationship ever because he yeah he's on the same page. hey we all find you know whatever we it, it, we each have eroticism, what really turns us on for whatever we, we don't really understand how that stuff gets wired, but you know, yeah. there's, there's always someone else that finds erotic what you find erotic. So <laughs> there's somebody out there for everybody. Is there a discussion? I don't know how to bring this up without sounding creepy. Is there a discussion <laughs> in your circles about, cause I, I've noticed a lot of things popping up where people are trying to push to make pedophilia an orientation. Um, I'm not an expert on this, but I did have a training with an expert on this in May. So, you know, it, I'll, I'll just say it, there are differences in the brain and it's wired in the brain. 
Oh, absolutely. So it's not something that, you know, just like conversion therapy doesn't work for somebody who's gay. It doesn't work for somebody who's a pedophile either. Um, so their attraction is, is wired into their brain. So I don't want to say it's an, it's an orientation to legitimize it. It's still, you can't, you know, it should not be acted on. I agree. But we can't help, we can't help what's wired into our brain about what we're attracted to or turned on by. Yeah. So, uh, so I don't want to call it that just because it could seem to legitimize it like any other sexual orientation. It's not okay to do that. Uh, but it's also not something we can fix in terms of what's erotic. We are who we are. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would fix a lot of problems in the world if there if was. We could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then not make it so much of a, of a, you know, it's again, communication throughout the world, but like mm -hmm. people have issues. Mm -hmm. We live in a society where mental issues or, or mental health is, a, is a, can be seen as a weakness. That's horrible. Right. right. Well, yeah. You don't want to go to your therapist and be like, you know, I think I'm a pedophile. What do I do? No one wants to talk about that, especially if it's themselves. Yeah, it's a tough, I mean, I, 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 I doubt like anybody who's got pedophilic interest listening. Um, James Cantor is the is the expert in this, and he's somewhere in Canada. Um, and that's you know, he works a lot with people, and it's about trying to not act on that and understand themselves. And you know, uh, what they, I think they, the term might be non-offending pedophiles, or you know, as long as there's there's sort of nothing wrong with whatever goes on in our brain, we just can't do everything that might turn people on. There's plenty of things that are illegal. Or oh, yeah. and we just can't do those, right? But everything's fair game in your mind. So. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm a closeted yeah. serial killer, but I just can't because I, I like my freedom. <laughs> so I don't act upon it yet. Right. There you go. <laughs> just got to start uh, burying kill kits around the country. And... Yes. <laughs> yes. But, uh... yeah. <laughs> okay. We've taken an hour of your time. Um, I would. I could talk to you for hours. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to delve into big conversations. Well, if you think if you think about more questions, or you know, we can do this again sometime. So absolutely. So mm -hmm. go ahead and plug your social medias and your books and all that stuff. And then also, after we finish this conversation, send me links to everything that you want me to put in the description of this episode, so people can click on it and find you and okay, and do all that stuff because we're all about. Uh, so let's see. Um, Intimacy with ease is my website. And my online course for couples who are basically in a good relationship but struggling with sex. And then the book I wrote is called Sex Without Stress. And then I have the Better Sex podcast. So I think any of those might be of interest to people. So, if you want me to come on and talk about how people have better sex, I'll come on your podcast. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. I'm world class. World class. <laughs> but I put, that's one thing I did. I can't, like a lot of my confidence mm -hmm. comes because of my ability to, because in my age and era, the way I was raised around macho men is that's what makes you a man. And it's not right mm -hmm. or wrong, but at the same time, like that's where you put a lot of my ego in. You do have a tramp stamp that says the black Casanova. So <laughs> I don't know if necessarily I call it a tramp stamp on a, on a man. <laughs> but, uh, a dare's a dare, right? So it's like <laughs> <laughs> we, the stays in, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, <laughs> right? Except for tears and herpes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nice meeting. You all. Th thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for playing Thank along you. and putting up with us. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. So, now we're gonna talk about you. But right. Thank you so much. And you're welcome to come back anytime. And if you want Steve to come on your show and have some therapy, <laughs> I'm his agent. Clearly, I need. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good evening, guys. Thank you. Enjoy the rest okay. of your weekend. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, I learned a lot. Did you? What did you, what'd you, what'd you learn about uh, you? About your relationship? About Asians? Uh, but... Well, you know, some of that stuff I kind of figured, but like the pedophilia thing, I had no idea that it was a. Uh, sexual orient it's, it's like, a lot of the pieces a lot of the stuff she was talking about like the pieces fit like it i totally get it but i i uh, you know like, you don't go around actively thinking about these right you know, i never knew ideas. it was wired in the brain though. makes total That's... sense though but is it yeah and, and it's funny because when i saw the it's probably about the last three or four weeks mm. and that's where kind of QAnon kind of rate rised up in there in their power because that's what they're all oh, you know, the world's being controlled by pedophiles and all this stuff and blah blah, blah. i'm like that's weird but then it started. A, there was a movement to 
that I've seen in memes and such that people are trying to legitimize pedophilia as a sexual orientation. Right. It would be no different than you being attracted to men, me being attracted to women, but they're Mm -hmm. attracted to women or men Mm -hmm. that are just younger, which I think that is an illness because like we've had the conversation about pubic hair. Like the reason I don't want a shaved is because I don't want the individual looking like a 12 year old. So it's, 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 yeah, there's nothing. I find it completely repulsive. So oh, well, th- that makes sense. I mean, the movement. Yeah, because it's yeah, because there's I a mean, better way do, to go how about do you, it. Yeah, I think it needs to be addressed. Definitely. Yeah, and you, if like you, like you see, I'm not going to go to my therapist and say that I like to have sex with little children. Mm-hmm. And I don't, by the way. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that you do, but you know what I'm saying I was bringing. You brought that up. Like, how could how would you even come up and because you know as soon as that flies out of your mouth, yeah, you're labeled. And you can't unring the bell. Right. And you can't, and you get, you, do you truly trust your therapist or your, or your mental health provider? Because there's certain things that if I see or witness, I have to, mm. by law, I have to say something. Right. And so I don't know what the laws are for like psychologists and psychiatrists and stuff like that. If they come and say, hey, I'm a pedophile. But if they've never acted on it, I mean, there's nothing illegal mm-hmm. about doing that. And no different than me saying, I would love to go out and stab my neighbor. Saying it's one thing, my neighbor, but I wouldn't say it out loud because if my neighbor comes up dead, mm-hmm. looking at me first. So it's, I don't know. I, if I can act, I've got, if I can not act on urges, I think everybody else should be able to do it as well. I mean, that may right. be kind of short sighted on my side. I don't think but, people are going to their chiropractor and be like, "Can you get the? Can you get this one spot in my back?" And God, I'm really just horny for this twelve year old down the block. What do you think, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what would happen if that. Like, oh, you got a pick? Like, it's, yeah, it's a. It's you a, got a fantasy <clears throat> draft going on? Or what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, kindergartners here. Like, yeah, it's weird. I, yeah, you can't find an adult that looks like a kindergartner. <laughs> true, but I mean, but there's entire subgroups of pornography where women that are like, you know, in their late twenties mm-hmm. or whatever that are, that look really, really, really young. Mm-hmm. So that it's out there, but I think if you made it, because is it the child's age, or is it the way they look? Stop looking at me <laughs> when you're asking these questions. Look, at you the do camera. it to me too. What's it? What's it? You do it to me too. Oh, okay. You start having a, a discussion with somebody else, and you'll be standing right at me. I'm like, and it makes it, it makes it weird, but I think, I think it helps. it's the way they look. I think it is. Right. So then therefore, why not start websites and which I'm sure they're probably out there. I don't look. Probably. But why you, encourage it? But there's, it's no different than, uh, well, like littles who have grown women that wear diapers and suck on pacifiers before they go to bed type stuff. Those people are out there. Yeah. So if you can make it acceptable to come out and then let then say that this is what your problem is and then try to solve that problem with the, with cuz there may be a 30 right. year old that looks 16 that wants to date an older man a man who wants who's going to appreciate her right until yeah. she no longer looks that young and then he'll trade her in for somebody else but that's every relationship mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, the person you date is not the person you you, you break up with so yeah I don't know. It's bizarre yeah, it's a weird. And what has to happen in your life when you want your diaper changed? And because hey, you're probably find, just like finding sexuality. Maybe your parents that. weren't like very attentive, and you're just like you want to get back to a point where you're supposed to be like cared for and taken care of. You know, I'm just hmm. yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to go back to hmm? like fourteen, fifteen. That was a good time in my life. I wouldn't want to go back even further than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are cruel, but I think. People, that was the best times. Yeah. That was could have been like you know children who were given their independence like before they wanted it or knew how to handle it, and they want to go back to a time where they didn't have to rely on themselves. You know, right? Well, let's start my argument with like Michael Jackson. He's been Michael Jackson his entire life. Now, regardless mm-hmm. of what you believe, he didn't build an amusement park because he wanted to have such little kids. He built an amusement park that he wanted to play with, but he didn't want like a retarded adult playing at the amusement park. So he invited kids over, hey, come play in my amusement park and we'll have fun. I mean, the jury's still out as far as what to believe, whether he did anything or not. But at the same time, <coughs> that's a prime example of a, an individual who just wants to be, who's trapped in a, a time of their life that mm-hmm. they enjoyed. Right. 
I can definitely see that in him. Is that why I had a pet monkey? Yeah. Okay, he came from poverty. I'll put it like this. Who? <laughs> you can't, if you're that famous. It's actually a chimpanzee, but it's like, whatever. Monkey's thing. a monkey's a monkey. What are you saying? That he, he had has sex with it? We don't, we don't know. The jury's still out. He may have like this. If you're going to, if you're into bestiality, I think the best animal to be in a bestiality with would be a primate. But mm-hmm. it could literally grab you by the balls and rip them off. Yeah, but so can Jenny. <laughs> Not like that. I mean, have you seen the forearms on a chimp? At least I, I cut my nails. They're, <laughs> they're jacked. Jacked. <laughs> Right, but at the same time, they can hold you. They can bring you a beer. They can bring you a moist towelette after, or a cow, or that reminds or a me of horse. Dave Chappelle's stand-up about his chimpanzee. He is a like, chimpanzee. Uh, that's just more monkey pussy for me. That yeah, one, chim, yeah. Chim, I'm gonna stay like... in today. <laughs> stay in tonight. My chimpanzee. Was about age or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, who was the first person mm-hmm. that they say that AIDS came from the green monkeys of Africa? Who was that first guy? That, well, had to, that had to have sex with that monkey. They are. Uh, <laughs> I was actually doing research into this just the other night. Because of AIDS? Uh, yeah, into the origins of it. Because I was watching Utopia and like they were talking about diseases and man made diseases and weaponized diseases. And I was like, I wonder if there's that conspiracy thing out there. Because I was thinking, I bet, I bet like Russia or something like manufactured it because it didn't show up. And I, get, and I started like doing research into it. And I guess there was before HIV, SIV for, you know, Simeon. Simeon yeah. yeah. And, uh, with there's a fat inversion as well and uh i guess it mutated to tram uh to um infect one type of monkey to a chimp and they um they think it was because they were being eaten by them and then they think that because the first they think the first um real case of hiv was in the 1920s in the republic of the congo or whatever and they think it was because they were, you know, they were hunting chimpanzees there at the time and other monkeys and eating them. And they think that it could have got transferred through you know, eating them or because they had cuts on their hands. And when they killed the monkey, they got the monkey blood into their own cuts. And it eventually evolved through through that that way, not not by having sex with them, but by. Oh, yeah, I don't think that. I don't think it lines up. Because, you know how hard it would be to catch a monkey and rape it in the wild? I, I believe I believe that the anatomy cage. doesn't work because m- <clears throat> chimpanzees have like extremely like they have like micro penises and small vaginas. So like a man's penis wouldn't fit in a in a chimp unless they were like had a micro penis themselves but. or lube. I guess you, I think you could kill the animal. I think that'd be like, like I think that'd be like trying relax. to fuck somebody's ear canal. Like you know, no matter how much they relax, it's not going in. Yeah, like that horse <laughs> fucking that woman. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, if you, that's not if you bring natural. in some bananas and you sweet talk a chimp, you could probably get a banana. Because there's people, <laughs> oh, God. there's people that are having sex with dogs and st- stuff like that. With peanut butter. Mm. Yeah. Ugh, it's I don't like chimp. Neither do I. <laughs> that <bag>. Childhood trauma. <laughs> 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 I'll never look at a jar of peanut butter. So I, yeah, I like to give into the I believe. That it it may have been like as you said like that makes complete sense because everything everything that we have experienced now is is a, is a mutation of something else we've evolved from something to what we are now. There's if you look at man, there's how many different shades of human being, nose shapes, hair texture, all that stuff. There's so many different variations through that's as you you take slavery. Slavery is. It was basically macro evolution. If you go to Africa, there's not guys that look like linebackers running around the jungles of Africa. Right. You started breeding into these huge, gigantic football players and all this stuff. Now there's there's the anomalies here and there, but for the most part, if you go to Africa, they're very because of the the region. Yeah. Narrow, very very skinny individuals. Yeah, you don't right. see any 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 Kimbo slices running through right. Ethiopia. Right, exactly. Yeah, if you did, it would not have been. There wouldn't have been slaves in the first place. But exactly. it's one of the- <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, Shaq and Kimbo were in Africa. At not the time. today, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Come here, white man. Yeah, there'd be white. Yeah, there'd be totally different. But right there, so you you take slavery as you know macro evolution and how it works out. And so I think like even uh, Corona, 
It's just a SARS virus. This is a variation of that. Mm-hmm. We just haven't been exposed to it because we weren't fucking around. Well, it, could, it could have been leaked from a, a virology lab. In right. China too, and though. there's no doubt in my mind that, that stuff is going on in the world. Like you, when well, they cloned Dolly the Sheep back in what, the 90s, yeah. so you think all of a sudden they just stopped? Right. Yeah. If they were cloning in the 90s, what are they doing other things now? Mm-hmm. So it's one of those. And I, there was a, he starts with a V, but there's a guy who was synthetic life. If you want to look, there's a, there's a documentary, but I used to subscribe to Discover Magazine, but they had basically a machine was built and it um, basically put in the genetic sequence to, and they created life in a laboratory. Mm. But they took out the, the, the envelope was they hollowed out like a, a microbe. But then they genetically created an organism and put it inside, and it it became alive. And this was in like the either late '90s, early early 2000s. So like this is the stuff that they're doing that we don't hear about, or that we barely hear about. It's not mainstream. So what are they doing that we don't know about? See, I I think personally, like scientific experiment is really gonna like blow wide open once we discover. I mean, for sure, life on another planet. And then people will be like, see, we're not special. Like, why are we not doing this, like, these experiments? And that's a mind-blowing thing when it comes to that. Is like, if you believe in creationism, you're so arrogant that God just made us, and then, oh, I'm done. Yeah. I'm the, I'm, I'm the wise and the all-knowing. I created Earth, and I did it nowhere else. You guys are special. I think that that's what... I mean, yeah, there's more galaxies in the universe than there are stars in our galaxy. Yeah. I mean, just to think about this, even if there were only one in every 1,000, you know, one planet in one, every 1,000 galaxies, that's still like millions upon millions. It's statistically of, impossible. Yeah, it's... it's the, the, the different variations of life on this planet. And like 90-some percent of organisms that are alive on this planet cannot live in an oxygen-rich environment. The mm-hmm. whole viruses and bacteria, and all that stuff, in the first place. And once they get inside of us, they thrive. Right. But I think getting to us is a one way trip. It's not like aliens showed up and left. I don't know. It's impossible right. to know how their technology works. Oh, yeah. But the fact that they would come here unprotected, I mean, they would have to have some, they would have to have a vaccine developed for them to live here to defend against all the different micro you know the microbiome but you wouldn't know that until you got here no different than us going somewhere else yeah i mean they would have to have sent people in you figure this stuff out study study things which they could have done you know in egyptian times or even before that yeah we don't know what happened we don't know how to build it but we don't know how the pyramids were built ancient aliens (laughs) which is was it occam's razor the easiest is usually the best. Cause there's a there's a place that's even just as like enigmatic in uh, South America. I can't remember the name of this place, but there was these like it's called the like something of the the stairway to the gods or something, but it's uh, or the doorway to the gods or whatever in uh in South America, and they they don't know what civilization of people were living there. I mean, once they discovered this place, like they were already gone. They had no idea where they came from, where they went. But, like, they had these gigantic 50-ton perfectly squared stones yeah, with Machu shims. Picchu. Yeah, yeah, and it's like the, granite stones? Yeah, they had huge granite, 50-ton granite stones that were brought from a quarry, like, 10 miles away that's at the bottom of a valley. Right. And they went and asked this guy, like, a, uh, a heavy equipment operator who worked at a quarry, and they're like, how would you move a 50-ton stone? up a mountain. He's like, oh, well, we would get in a bunch of heavy equipment and we bulldoze a road to the top of the hill and it would probably, you know, without, you know, this equipment and being able to, you know, literally build, engineer an entire roadway up a mountain, you know, over, you know, hairpins and just to eliminate the the, uh, the, ang- the angular right. nature of a hill, of a mountain. It's he said it would be impossible. I and mean, that was the one, in the, and the, all the stone was cut like ninety degrees, perfect ninety degrees. Yeah, and it was shimmed and clean. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it was shimmed to, <clears throat> to to move with the you know like the the movements of the the tectonic plates in the area. So it's like how how do they even know to do that? How do they know that the Earth is shifting? 
you know, it's like imperceivable right. amounts. And but they know that if they don't do that, this stone will crack. So it's and like just you know how 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 would they even get this? Just the getting the shims between these things. I mean, would require some type of crane, and and you know what what would they be using as a crane? You know, like trees. How would a tree hold up that much weight? Right. There aren't mysteries. Yeah. Mysteries of the uh, the, problem with yeah, the I, lost I, the lost knowledge is just insane. It's like I got caught up in the whole Zachariah Sitchin and all that stuff for there for a while, and it was like, oh my god! And I started I delved into that. And this was before Agent Aliens even came about. I just was like, talking to a guy. Did you ever heard of Zachariah Sitchin? Like no, and so I started to think. See the guy who did the Chariots of the Gods, or no? That's a uh, oh, what's his name? No, Zachariah Sitchin. He's long gone, but he's okay. the one that essentially translated the cuneiform tablets of Sumeria. Hmm. And so in the tablets, there was like 25,000 tablets that were discovered from, from Sumeria. And they, in the tablets, they talk about, that's where, that's where the theory of planet X came from was hmm. them. And so, cause it's in there, they talk about the 10 planets, but then they have diagrams of the solar system. They also knew what color like Neptune and Saturn were before we did. They knew Pluto existed before we did. We didn't know that Pluto existed until like 1930. They knew the double... Da- the Sumerians have um, a structure in Mesopotamia called Eden, where it shows intertwining snakes wrapping around, and it, and it's like a it's like a big, huge individual like holding like a sword or something like that. And I you had to look it up, but then the snakes were wrapping around the sword, and to them that that is the 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 cradle of civilization where man was created. But it's also the intertwining snakes represented the DNA strand. And this is in, these are in the, the cuneiform tablets. We yeah. didn't know what DNA looked like until 1960. Yet they've had it was carved in stone thousands of years ago. But then people, oh, that's not because it since it predates biblical scripture, people cast it off as ah nonsense. But yet it's real. They had a written language. It's all right there, plain as day. And they knew a color. Um, it may have been Saturn. We didn't know what color Saturn was until like 1970 or something like that. But they had a, they had a name. They had all their colors of all the planets and what they look like and like in detailed descriptions, all in stone tablets found in a cave and stuff like that. And so then, but then it starts to get weird because they talk about Nibiru being the the planet X, where the Anunnaki came from, and those are the and so that's where it starts to get sci-fi and all that stuff. People start to oh they're just making this up, but these are people who wrote this stuff in stone for a reason. But the way and Battlefield Earth, have you seen that movie? Yeah. It's loosely based on that. That's kind of like the story. So basically, uh, the planet Nibiru comes into our solar system every 3,600 years, but it's on an elliptical uh, orbit. So it takes 3,600 years for it to come back around and go back out. Right. And so you think, oh, that's kind of crazy. But, and I, I don't like doing like the conspiracy theories and stuff like that, but if you go to nasa.gov right now and type in Sedna, it was discovered in 1984. Maybe uh maybe L. Ron Hubbard was on to something. But see, he went wrong because he was full of shit. He just he lied about most of his childhood and stuff back when you couldn't fact check stuff. Yeah. I mean, but he did write Battlefield Earth. Yes. Yeah. But I think he was loosely basing a lot of it off those those teachings because he was the he books was, were always Zachariah Sitchin he goes was back to like the fifties or sixties. Strange. Man. But Sedna has the same elliptical orbit of Nibiru and it'll be back it'll be close enough to be seen with the naked eye in the year twenty seventy five. Yeah, this documentary I was watching that's last that, night. I fell asleep while I, before I finished it, but it's called The Phenomenon, and it was made this year. And they said they just discovered like a uh, a planet that's only 100 light years away. That's like it's just called a super habitable planet. It's got liquid water, and it's in the right spot. And so it's like if we're if we're discovering these places that are so close, like there's they're guaranteed to be. And all these all these different like encounters with aliens and spaceships and stuff. It's like even if like one percent of them, or even if ninety nine percent are lying or wrong, or they witness some type of swamp gas, you know, refracting the light from the sun at noon, and it was you know the North Star was in the right position, you know, shit like right, that. Yeah, yeah. But even if only one percent of it is accurate, like how do you explain that? What are these things? What are the like? There's Air Force has videos of these flying craft, like, and they they say like the 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 trajectories that they're taking would be impossible for a human to withstand. Like you know, going from like three thousand miles an hour and taking a, a thirty degree turn and going back at the same speed. Well, that was 
part of like Einstein's theory, like time travel would be possible. We just can't travel fast enough as a human being. Yeah. To, ex- to I mean, to get to the speed of light without killing yourself. Right. We have to be yeah. in controlled. We have to be in a liquid, in a liquid environment to be able to withstand the pressure, and it have to be like yeah, like airtight. And see, what's crazy is that the speed of light is always constant. So, like, let's say you're going four hundred thousand miles an hour. Like you're on a train going 400,000 miles an hour and there's a headlight at the front of the train and you turn that light on. Is it going the speed of the light? Is that light traveling at the speed of light plus 400,000 miles an hour? No, it's only traveling to the speed right. of light. It's, it, it backs down, you know, that 400,000 miles an hour. So yeah. it's just super, super bizarre. Which is evident by the sonic boom. You would, you would see the, the, the jet is traveling at the same speed of the sound that the jet is traveling at. Yeah. So. It's always constant. It's when you get into those those quantum that quantum world. It's oh well, you take like peel us down to like the, the the chemical level. Human beings don't have some super secret molecule that there is nowhere else in the universe. Carbon is everywhere. Mm-hmm. When the sun burns out, like right now, the sun is hydrogen, right? So what what we're getting the energy we're getting is hydrogen is collapsing, going plasma and creating helium because they're binding. They're having nuclear fission where two hydrogen molecules are binding and they become helium and cast off into the universe. But after, once the hydrogen burns up, then the helium is going to do for it. Now the helium is going to bond with the hydrogen. A couple of helium is going to bond to one hydrogen. Now become the third one. I don't know what number three is on the, I can't think of it right now, whatever number three is. And so all these, everything on our periodic table is being created inside stars and cast out into the universe. As a star dies, all that stuff will collapse and then explode. And it's going to send all those, ele- all those elements out into the universe to become whatever they become. Where does a bunch of chains of carbons and oxygen and hydrogen right now? A couple of nitrogen here and there. We're about, 30, we're about $30 worth of chemicals from a chemistry store in a human being. So to think that that hasn't somewhere else with, with li- liquid water and, and breathable air has not happened again. But what happens is you get caught, oh, oh no, God created this. So Yeah, and you got to think, like, they probably would look some similar to us. Yeah, because, evolution. Yeah, and you get it because you got to think, you know, is a soap bubble going to be different on a different planet? No, it's going to be the same, same because chemical it's, it's, yeah, and it's the a sphere is the most efficient shape for that that thing to tank. So why would it be different? Why would they be squids or you know whatever? Right, is you know to be a biped and to have opposable thumbs. Like you got to have like the necessary things to create tools to use tools, and then a large enough brain to figure out how to create the tools and you know implement them. Yeah, like you just take Earth. Throw, and then you have a few anomalies like the duck bill platypus and stuff like that. It just doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, if you look at a cladogram, because of genetics and zoology and undergrad, you look at a cladogram, you have a line of birds because it just goes back to the Galapagos Islands. And you see several different types of the same bird, but their beaks would be different because this bird adapted this seed. And so the beak had to adapt to crack open this particular seed and so on and so forth. And so beaks are just an adaptation of, of a tool is all a beak is. They don't have hands and opposable thumbs. They can fly and do all that stuff, but they need to be able to eat and crack things open and do all that stuff. And so it's all this is yeah. Every there's enough creatures just in, in the plant that we live shit, just in, the, in North America to explain why things become things that they are. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Because a lion is it used to be a used to be a tiger. We've talked about this in the past. There's there's fossil record that, that tigers have existed a long time. You can breed a lion and a tiger, and have a viable offspring. However, the offspring is usually born sterile mm-hmm. because they've deviated enough and they, they're, they can get together. But due to speciation, they've deviated just enough to where nature deems them to be, no, we don't want any more of these. This is not a good thing. And they, they're usually sterile, die off. That's why there's not a whole bunch of this. Yeah. Because a white tiger in the jungle is dead. It's a dead tiger. Yeah. Makes a great rug, though. I'm oh, sure, <laughs> but but you you see it coming. A yeah. lion looks like the savanna. You you watch videos of the tiger that went in the bushes and they seem like the Indian, they're on an elephant, and they saw a tiger off in the distance, and then the tiger just disappeared in the bushes. The savanna, like, like in Africa, there's no so, tigers in no, Africa. No, no, I'm sorry, it's in India. Okay, but there's a YouTube video where they're all riding, they're they're filming it, and oh, a tiger, and then the tiger disappears, hmm. like off in the distance, and the next thing you know, the tiger comes up right. Right at the base of the elephant and attacks the people. Wow. But you didn't see him move through the bushes or anything. There was no ripple in the bushes or nothing. The people were like panicking. 
it's on you we'll watch it when we finish up here but it's he's adapted to where he lives mm. and then you have the uh, you've seen the bear eating the elk calf no Ooh, it's brutal elk, <laughs> elk you know elk when they're born they can't walk they have to, right. they have to just lay there and there's black bear lift him out whew, rip that thing apart that was delicious oh probably, <laughs> probably it's veal That'd be good, but uh, yeah. But brutal. right there, we're born. We're, we're people are oblivious to the brutality of nature. Oh, I watched the documentary. Chimpanzees, another monkey, or a type of monkey, entered their their space, and most people think, oh, chimpanzees lay around eating uh, fruits and berries all the time. No, they're carnivorous. Mm-hmm. But you can see them coming. They're not designed to be stealthful individuals, so they eat a lot of they graze a lot and do all that stuff. But a monkey that cross over into their trees and one monkey screamed out the rest of them scattered and shot out the trees and in corner of the monkey one grabbed him by the tail slammed him to the ground and ate him alive Jeez. Nice. gangster motherfuckers are like i'm like oh i don't want to watch that anymore because this makes the zoo that much more scary i i expect a lion to eat me but the monkey we could be friends you ever been charged at the zoo Staring at the girl. I got charged once by a girl at the zoo. No, they know what's up. Real recognized real player. <laughs> <laughs> That's only not racist because you're black, but I know. But uh yeah, you stare at like an ape through the glass and like it came and charged me, pounded on the glass. Because I was like making eye contact with it. But right there. Is he doing it to fuck with you? Yeah, but listen again, he's like, that's who he's around. I, I wonder. He's got nothing but time. And so if you give someone enough time to think about like all people escape from prison, they weren't escape artists when they went to prison. They, de- they developed these skills in isolation. Right now, would I know how to make a shiv? Fuck no, because I've never been in a situation where I need to learn how to make a shiv. Do I need to know how to make fucking uh, birthday cake in jail with uh, vanilla wafers? No, because I've never been put in that situation. But we had the discussion with uh, our first interview. I thought she was doing life in prison, talking about all these different types of food that you make. You make do with what you have. So if Jake Prison, for instance, like you make ramen noodles, like are decent by themselves, so they pack it right now. But a prisoner can take ramen noodles and make them fucking delicious. <sighs> Steve don't care. Oh, I care. I care so much. I mean, I, I care. Yeah, I'm, I'm touching myself right now. I'm like <laughs> giving up Vanilla myself waivers. a prostate massage. Do you want to wrap the show up, Steve? Are you that um, distracted? No, no, I was just stretching. That's all. Sometimes you got to stretch, man. I wait till the show's over. Oh, Oprah? Oprah? <laughs> Oprah Winfrey? Jules, Jules, Jules says, Jules Brown says, Jules. when's the sex therapist on? You're you already missed her, Jules. See, better, lines, better rewind about an hour. Cougars, oh my. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you got to go back. That was like 45 minutes ago. That was like 108. So have you seen the video of the guy running from the mountain lion that just came out? Yes. And you want know quick, quick trip me out? Have you seen that? So he's j- was like a jogger. And he's like, I just wanted to jog, man. Like he's, I was like, go away. I'm so scared right now. And the whole time he's backing up, you see all those rocks he could have picked up. I guess he, at the end, what triggered the mountain lion to run away was he did throw a rock at it. Right, point. but it took a minute and something, like a minute and 40 seconds before he... Yeah, but the whole thing in, ensued because he approached the like this mountain lion's uh, offspring, this, the babies or whatever. Oh, is that what I did? The cubs. I can't reply. Because I watched a, the, the Colorado State Wildlife release a statement about the video because they were like, it wouldn't have happened if he hadn't done that. Interesting. But once he did, he took the correct option by backing away slowly, not running. Oh, he did say big. go back to your babies towards the end. Yeah, he said, yeah. So he, uh, you know, make a lot of noise, make yourself big, try and scare the animal. That's all you can do. Don't run. Not going to run a mountain lion. Yeah. Next thing you know, it's going to latch onto the back of your neck. And... You can't outrun a house cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> let alone a mountain lion. <laughs> I remember when I was young, there was the, um, uh, there was a Boy Scout, or no, there was a field trip that some school took up into the mountains, like, you know, small children, like eight, seven, eight years old or something like that. And one boy, they lost him somehow, and uh, they never found him again. They were looking for him for the longest time, but they were pretty sure a mountain lion got him. I just yeah. wandering through the woods, and there was a mountain lion in a tree, like, woo. He looks delicious. Yeah, that's Never a had snack. a Boy Scout. <laughs> yeah. Cub Scouts are okay, but the Boy Scouts are probably even better. Yeah. 
But uh, that was it. that was it for him. They found some of his clothes and maybe some bones at some point. But they're like, yeah, probably mountain lion. And a fat mountain lion. Just later. In- <laughs> you want some of this? That's why. That, that's why black horror films are unrealistic because because he was like, why the fuck? Why go where stuff is? Keep your ass at home. We even have it at downtown Denver. So like, keep your ass in fucking Denver. Don't go up in the mountains thinking you're cool. You can run around Denver. Go to the black neighborhood and get chased. Keep your ass away from nature. You can't call the cops on a mountain line. So you're saying I should stay out of black neighborhoods? No. I'm going to be chased? No. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm being, it's just it's like one of those situations you want to run and get your heart rate up. <laughs> go where you know you have a chance. Mm. You have no chance. Well, that one guy, didn't he stab a mountain line with a pan or something like that? Why the fuck are we in the jungle with a pan? Or the, the mountain the chunk. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but don't go where stuff lives that you can't beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw this uh, I Shouldn't Be Alive episode, mm-hmm. which if it, you all don't know, uh, I Shouldn't Be Alive is like a Discovery Channel. I don't know if it's still going or not. It might be. But it's a, it was a Discovery Channel show where, you know, people made it through some, you know, extreme harrowing experience and came out the other side uh, alive. And uh, there was these guys, there was a hunting party that went to literally an island called Kodiak Island. Do you want to move your phone? I was removing the... I was getting buzz, like, <laughs> feedback. It's called Kodiak Island because it's infested with Kodiak grizzlies, right? Like, the the biggest, meanest uh, type of grizzly bear, the Kodiak. And so they were up there, and they split off into different groups to start, you know, hunting these bears. Because, you know, you don't even need to set up a blind. or You don't... I mean, you don't set up a blind for bears. You You track them. You find them. And it's a relatively small island with a very high population of bears. So they were, and eventually, like one bear ripped apart this guy, and then another bear ripped apart this guy, and then the it took the it took the uh, the gun away from him, started ripping open this guy, and he took out a like a knife and just started stabbing the bear in the neck while he was like latched onto him. And that's how he got away. But it's just like, why were you fucking? What did you expect? Yeah, it's in the name. <laughs> you went to Kodiak Island. With a couple of guns, and he thought you were just gonna smoke some bears, you know, <laughs> in their territory. Yeah. Like going to Vietnam, I think you're gonna conquer them. No, <laughs> yeah, it's e- exactly. So that worked out. I mean, I can't imagine anything more terrifying than being mangled by a fucking bear. Well, have you seen the Revenant? That scene in there, I'm like, yeah, I want a part of that. You know, they changed the entire story of that movie. Like, it's based on a true story, but uh, they changed the the ending to be more pleasing to the viewer because. At the end of the Revenant, spoiler alert, um, Leo DeCap kills Tom Hardy, or he he allows Tom Hardy to be captured by uh, Indians in a creek and killed by them, or whatever, or Native Americans, excuse me. But um, in real life, um, Tom Hardy's character, the bad guy, just uh, he uh, he ended up uh, rejoining some type of uh, military group, and that was it. He never caught him, never killed him, never had any kind of revenge. Tracked him for a long time, but. Was never able to actually kill him. That's a stupid ending. <laughs> exactly. Who wants to watch that? I've seen a lot of like, oh, that's it? Like, what the fuck happened? I hate those movies. But then, but the bear scene is so fucking graphic. Yeah. That's terrible. Like, I, when I was watching, I'm like, wow, that's terrifying. I want no part of that. But back then, you didn't have a choice. You had to navigate the, the land, but we don't have to. We have cars. We have treadmills. Shit like that. You don't have to go and fucking run in the woods. <laughs> yeah, you can literally stream like a walk through the woods to your TV and put the treadmill That's in front it, of it. Yeah. Peloton. And then that, spray that some like air fresh and be like, ooh, pine. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can pick up some road because you want that natural like wilderness smell. There's skunks across the street. That's why I don't walk around the park at night. Well, I don't walk in my neighborhood during the day because I'm black, but I don't walk around at night because of skunks. Yeah, that's a racial story. You can't call people skunks, by the way. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> what kidding. kind of people are skunks? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I, just, I, just, I try to make you look racist whenever I can. Wow. <laughs> just to make up for my own racial uh, biases. <laughs> I can't be racist. Okay. How right. can I be racist? You're the, you're the oppressor. I'm oppressed by your blackness. No. You're always trying to. Wanting de- to be like me. <clears throat> You're right. It's not the same as oppression. You're totally right. Yeah, he idolizes you. Yeah, I've yeah. got a framed picture of you at my house. Yeah. Which would be dope. Would you take... Oh, it's, it's, it's actually you as like the, the guy with the earth on his back or whatever, the globe. Atlas. Yeah, it's that guy, <laughs> but with your head on it. So It's just like badly photoshopped, though. Clearly, it's like your face on a I'll white pose. 
You want to take a, like uh, you want to take a picture like in Step Brothers? <laughs> I'm not sure. for a Christmas card. Oh, that would be funny. Yeah, <laughs> like sweaters and stuff. Yeah, that would be cool. Right, and but we're both balding and we don't have curly hair. I guess John C. Riley's kind of balding. <laughs> but... Get matching tattoos. I don't know if you'd want to get a swastika or not, but I don't know. <laughs> Just half of one. I'll get the inside. You we can still, outside. we can still. Uh, there the was, there was a, uh, a Hindi professor who's like, I'm trying to reclaim the swastika because the swastika is actually the Hindu symbol for power. Yeah, and he's <laughs> he's like, I'm trying to reclaim it, so he got it tattooed on his arm, but he got it on that off kilter angle that the Nazi is used because normally it's like it's square in right. the in the, in Hindi culture, but he got it like tilted, so they're like, yeah, it's still a, kind of a swastika. <laughs> can yeah there's better ways of going around getting that claiming that back maybe talk to them and it was a bad tattoo like it wasn't even filled in like well or anything it's like oof, god where did you get this done That's well first of all you gotta find a tattoo artist who's willing to do that these days i guess it would be more like, like i'd be more willing to do it like on an, a hindu guy like oh clearly you're not a white supremacist right right that's the excuse you can use. Yeah. Get your next ta tattoo. Yeah. I can't. would do it as a joke. If you walked in, I'm a tattoo artist. And if you walked in personally and says, I want a swastika on my arm, you're getting fucking cussed out and asked to leave. You walk in, I want a swastika. Like, hell yes. I'm going to, I'll do it for free. Just because I know you're walking <laughs> around with a swastika on your arm. Yeah. Regardless of your motivations of having it, it's hilarious. <laughs> It's bizarre. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Of all things. We can design a tattoo for each other and then put like secret codes in the tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Would you put a swastika yeah. in your sleeve? Like super secret somewhere? No. No. Please? No. <laughs> First of all, the swastika is not going to blend in with like a traditional ink wash painting, like which is what this is lines. It could be like there's no straight gonna, lines in nature. <laughs> yeah, but you can have so you have your nature scene and then you have like a wooden bridge. And then somewhere in the trussels of the bridge is a swastika holding the bridge up for a support. That's like the like the super <laughs> hidden like white supremacy groups that like hold like the 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 P in their photos or like, yeah. Which is the fucking circle game. I don't yeah. understand that at all. Ah, like, oh, fuck, you got me. You fucking racist. <laughs> you, know what, you know what's fucked up? Was there was this guy in California. He worked for like the power company or something. And he was just in traffic. And he had his arm dangling out his window. And it was kind of going like this. And this black guy took a picture. He's like, the power company is fucking white supremacy. And whatever. He may have been smoking a joint. Yeah, well, he just yeah, had just his had hand a, like out the window. And it was like, it was just so loosely. It wasn't even like like this. It wasn't like that. It was like. Like just barely, like his thumb and forefinger were just kind of touching. And this guy took a picture of it and uploaded it to Instagram or Twitter or something. And that guy got fired. I was like, that's okay, is so we don't, but we don't know. He may have been doing that on purpose. It's like, you know, I'm just gonna go because okay. Well, he was like Hispanic, part like partially Hispanic, even though. Yeah, the leader of Proud Boys is yeah. Cuban. But if but, okay, lay your hand naturally. Exactly. Put your hand in a position where this is. He may have had like a wrist problem. Who knows? He, he may have had his wrist possible. fused or something. I don't he may know. have that Chris Rock pinky. Whatever the fuck Chris Ross had going on. Chris Ross? Chris Rock. Rick Ross. But yeah, like that's, that's, you've got to purposely do that. It was, so, they weren't even like, t like, I wish I, I don't want to like dig. That's no different than picture. me doing shit like this. He's giving his finger. <laughs> no, this is the only finger that fits under my glasses. <laughs> so. Yeah. But I mean, you mistook. But the, the guy who posted the picture was like, oh, well, I didn't mean it that seriously. He like issued like a tweet later. He's like, I didn't mean for oh. him to get fired. Own that. Yeah, he's like kind of like backing off it, which made it even seem even worse. It's like you were being a Twitter whore. Right. And you may have gotten this guy fired. I, yeah, yeah. At the expense of somebody else, you oh, wanted to go gosh. viral at the expense of someone else. He he didn't yeah, think he it was going to come back to that guy. But the like the power company was like, we know this truck on this day was in this area and it had to have been this guy. And they went and confirmed it. And he was like, yep, you're, you're, you're gone. Poor See guy. You. Well, if he was That's doing so it on purpose, so like, first of all, do it on your own time. Second of all, <laughs> right. don't do it in traffic if you don't want people to see it. I mean, but that's just like a weird place to like wipe 
white power at this red light. <laughs> 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 and like, I'm the power white power company. But it's yeah, one of those things. White power company. <laughs> I don't know if it was for a power company. I just I think it was, but that would be a good twist. Yes. Wow. But I I don't understand why people get caught doing stupid shit still. In my day, there was no cameras. Mm-hmm. Now you have to assume at any given moment, somebody is watching. Mm-hmm. This is in the privacy of your own home, but even then there's cameras within this house for safety reasons. And yeah, the safety reasons, but they're only on the, only, the indoor ones are only on when we're X videos isn't known for their safety. profiles. <laughs> <laughs> But they're only on when you trigger a sensor somewhere in the house, like the bus. We used to have it that the one in the living room swivels, and so there's a there's a motion sensor inside the, my bus. If you pass, if you wiggle the door, wiggle the bus at a certain thing, the, the camera can turn to the window to see what's outside, and it can also trigger the ones that are outside. There's one in the garage, so if you enter the garage, if you open the door at night or anything like that, it'll let you know, hey, gr- garage motion has been censored, and the cameras will turn on. Other than that, there's one in the hallway. You'll see it when you walk outside. So if you walk across that at night, it'll turn the the living room lights on so you can walk throughout the house. Hmm. But that's still, I know those are on. I know where to to jerk off and stuff because the cameras can't see me. But if you're outside (laughs) doing something stupid, you got to just assume like when we're kids, Jesus is watching. Just assume Jesus is always watching you. Right. Don't do stupid shit. There's someone with a camera everywhere. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) But we've been emboldened now. I like, think, well, fuck it. If I go viral, because bad press is still press, right? So, right. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really glad you used right antiseptic on your. Maybe you should go right out there. and jack off, and you know. Oh, I'm sure something. he does. That's why he keeps that big <laughs> bottle of fucking paper towel out there. <laughs> paper towels, yeah, you, or whatever. It is. What's a you, bottle of paper towels? Have you ever? Have you ever jacked off in traffic? No. Or while you were driving? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just curious. Have you ever masturbated? What you can't? I no, got, no. I got roadhead. I got roadhead once, once. And I was driving down the road. It was a road trip. We were just going to another. I can't say it like it'll, it'll narrow it down. It was years ago, decades ago. When like nineteen twenty four. Yeah, almost. that's before your grandma <laughs> was born. You, when you got right, your first Model T, right before my freedoms, <laughs> right before his eyes was free, <laughs> and so we still had the bad drinking fountains. And like speed limit everywhere, the speed limit was fifty five at this time. And we're going, and in my mind, oh my god, this is amazing! But I'm still driving, minding my own business, doing my thing. She's going to town. I look down, I'm going almost hundred miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. with, someone's, with my dick in someone's mouth. And at no point do I think, oh, this is probably a bad idea because if I there's no airbags back then. So, uh-huh. but you got to think if if I wreck, and I didn't realize I was going that fast because you're caught up in that moment because time stands still and everything stands still when you got yourself inside somebody. And so the whole time I'm like, holy shit! And I saw like, you got to stop. So I was like, just pull her head off and we pull, I think we pulled. <laughs> was it off. still attached to her body? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But then we pulled over to the side of the road and had sex in the car. And, when I bought our business, but it was one of the, you have the curiosity, and so, but yeah, there's again young and stupid. So you, it just makes you an aggressive driver. Oh, You're, ridiculous! I mean, I was still, <laughs> I didn't run anybody. It was you know, it was at night on the highway, mm-hmm. but it's at no point was I being reckless. Or in my mind, I guess I may, it may have been because I was still going like ninety some miles an hour, like like ninety eight hmm. miles an hour, like a Taurus. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, this is extremely dangerous, and I stopped. Like, yeah, but you, you once you get out of your system, you're like, oh, that was cool. But I'm also nowadays things are different. I'm less like I had sex in the park at Duncombe Elementary School, which is a crime yes. these days. It was I a crime don't. then too, but <laughs> but back then you didn't think about stuff like that. Right. Now you can become a sex offender for peeing outside. <laughs> when I was a kid, I got dad, I got to pee. You pull up on the side of the road, you open the door, you mm-hmm. piss in the woods. Yeah. Got back in the car and drove off. Now that's a crime. That's fucking ridiculous. Well, I mean, I think it's I think you get a pass if you're a kid, but if you're like no. an old if you're an old man and you're like peeing like at your neighborhood, your neighbor's kid's birthday party, and you're like, hey, 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 I gotta well, pee. Yeah. But I think it comes down to also the officers being a dick. It's a, it's it's a it's a crime in the book, so therefore if you're peeing on the side of the road at six, mm-hmm. someone can be charged with sex offense and it'll carry over into adulthood. So it's a decent exposure no matter what. Unless you like put a funnel over it. Yeah, he's carry a water bottle or a, or a jug to pee in or something like that. Yeah. 
<laughs> I got a gangster ass bladder. What I like to do is, I don't know, I can say it out loud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes I got to pee in the bus. You can accept that. <laughs> no, so what I do is I got to pee. Don't ever drink from the Gatorade bottles in his bus. <laughs> if I got to pee, I'll pull into a car wash, open the doors. I'll pull in just enough so that the doors open and I'll pee against the brick wall and dry. And then leave. Oh. They don't make a golden flavor of Gatorade, just so everybody knows. <laughs> they have a yellow one, don't they? Yeah, but it's not It's not golden. No. You'd you have ever, well, it depends though. on what you're eating. <laughs> have you ever had a golden shower? No. Don't lie. Have you? Just kidding. No. No. Is it guys I've been asked to give one, but I... Oh, not by me. Of course. I, I didn't, Don't look at I me didn't that do way. that. Why not? It was just too weird for me. Yeah. I can't associate piss or poop with pleasure. It just at doesn't all. work. Yeah, thank you. We're on the same page with that. Like, it's, it's nothing... <laughs> because... As a prank, sure. Oh, it's hilarious. To come? No. <laughs> it's hilarious. To get a toilet seat, put her, yeah. Well, my whole life, put it around like, your neck. Well, no, Piss my, on my me. whole life, I pee in the shower. If you take a shower with me, I'm still peeing in the shower. It's just fun. Mm-hmm. I can pee on you now. Yeah. I don't do that yeah. anymore because I've learned my lesson. Yeah, almost died once. <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, like things like to me, it's not necessarily the act, but to me, it's dirty. Anything I have to get up and clean off afterwards is not fun. For me, yeah, to be soaked in it, yeah, because you Ugh. go from all this pleasure to not fuck now. We got to change the sheets and yeah. wipe this down and gonna get a fucking rash shit in my chest hair. Yeah, like, right. this is not <laughs> not as fun. I'm gonna be in the moment, but I've never been asked to do anything weird. Yeah, well, piss you can you can get off, you know, yeah, you, you can, can fucking off, but like shit, a that... Listerine will take care of some piss, but poop, yeah, oh, but you're, you're gonna need a floss, you're gonna have to go get a new toothbrush. It might even stick with you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you eating it? I don't know. Making a funny joke, that's all. How is that? There's nothing funny about eating shit <laughs> and dying. Maybe. How much would it take for you to eat my poop? This is just a taste. You just, <laughs> just get a little bit on your finger. 25,000. 25,000? Just, just a finger. Mm-hmm. And I would make sure it had nothing well, in it. Damn, I, mean, I could take out a loan for that. Month. I can get a lot of personal therapy, and I would be happy because I don't want to do it. I'd be raping myself with poop. Because <laughs> no, you would want to do it because you want to pay some. Maybe bills. you'd like it. Yeah, yeah. Who because knows? you got to think about it. <laughs> who was the first person? Is like this tastes like shit. How do you know? I don't know. Ask Steve. Steve, does this taste like shit? Because that's going to be the running joke from that point forward. Steve, I would obviously have to end the friendship. Okay, it's never gonna, it's never gonna work out. Like once we, once we get to that point where I have to drink your piss or eat your shit for money, that's no longer a friendship. That's like you abusing your wealth against my poverty. That's some rich people shit. I want to see this motherfucker eat my poop, drink my piss, and I'm gonna pay him. And it's just like okay, a you price. know I need the money. <laughs> but but okay, but you were gonna you drink my piss for a thousand, and we even downplayed it to the point where we just make the ice cubes the urine, mm-hmm. and you had to drink the water before I the could. ice cubes melted for a thousand dollars. But but then you add twenty four thousand. Piss is sterile. You're not gonna get to, fucking hepatitis from piss. Right. You're not gonna get anything negative. But I'm, I'm hundred percent sterile because it's coming. Because if I had to go too. through a whole series of treatments afterwards, I mean. Ugh. Better be twenty five thousand. Because if I'm going to have to go and get get on fucking, that's a very exact number, twenty five thousand. Well, that's what he would take to get shit on the chest in a previous mm-hmm. podcast. Twenty five thousand to take mm-hmm. one to the chest. Yeah. Telling you, but that, that'd be the end of the friendship. There's no that hurts. Just so my twenty. So you put in, you basically put a number in our friendship. That's what I'm hearing. Unless you let me poop on you too. No, no, that's not the conversation. But then you have to give me twenty five. You have to give me twenty six thousand. So if you just give me a thousand, you eat my shit and you can poop on me. Because <laughs> that's a losing deal. <laughs> do that. Yeah, but you get the shit on me. You will have that on me for the rest of your life. I could be the cameraman. Yeah. We could do like a rendition of three girls. Why does everybody want to see me drink piss and <laughs> eat two shit? Girls. Is it two girls or three girls? <laughs> two. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the video's gross. Oh God. <laughs> We don't want to. This is hypothetical. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I can't ask myself. I feel uncomfortable asking Jenny <laughs> to eat my poop. 
Why can't we find yes, somebody? Yes, as in, you should. <laughs> yeah. Why can't we find somebody like in? You know, He's got that shitty face. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of people who are already out there like twenty nine thousand. I'd do it for five hundred. You just gotta find me. <laughs> if you're out there and you'll get poop in your mouth for five hundred dollars, please contact us at five three zero YouTube, <laughs> and Jeremy will supply you with a sample <laughs> and a non disclosure agreement. <laughs> I will yeah. suck it out of your ass for for a happy meal. <laughs> yeah, you got some poverty stricken family oh, in like in Compton or something or oh. down in Juarez or you know in I'll the, eat your the, shit. The my kids will too in the, <laughs> or in some trailer park in Memphis or something it's like oh, hell get him down here <laughs> no. oh there's gotta be people that are into it into money yeah no which is everyone's weird, weird into things. money because copophilia so. is a thing it's, there's a term there's a term for it the people that are into it. I'm not into it. No. Unless Taurus? you got 25000 Taurus is a prone to it. You, either you have a Taurus? No. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? See? You See, knew. I, See, you knew I was a Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're prone to homosexuality and copophilia. Hmm. Wow. Well. I don't believe in the whole astrology thing, though. Me either, except for that one. <laughs> yeah, because if you think about, like... <laughs> Everything has shifted since they uh, created astrology. So, like, what they're doing isn't accurate anymore because of everything has moved. Oh, it's just psychology. And you put the words in a certain order. It's no different than, like, fortune tellers. You're usually very good at reading people. But if you also... Contact Chloe. You generalize I've called it. Chloe Have before. Really? Yeah. Oh, are we going to call? We can. How are we going to do it from my phone? No, we'll, Cause it needs we'll call to from, be, has to be from your phone? It needs to be, like, Excuse actually, me. no, I don't think so. Here. Give it to... Here we go. All right, Jeremy. Let's l- listen to our messages. What? Where's your, where's your James Earl Jones voice? What? All black people have a James Earl Jones voice. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking like Field of Dreams, James Earl Jones. No. <laughs> Not fucking Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Everything the light touches is our kingdom. <laughs> oh, you've heard those? You've seen those prayer commercials. Uh, what? There's like a the pray. The Lion King. Oh, I was going to say, there's a, there's a pray, there's a, there's a pray.com advertisement That's where like James Earl Jones reads the Bible. Oh, no. Oh, That's the, from The Lion King. You ever hear about that guy? He has like an infomercial in the middle of the night where he sends people like tap water or water. No. He's a priest or whatever. He sends people pr- um, oh, water yeah. to. You know, as soon as I got the water, the water I, my, I got $10,000 up here in my bank account. Seriously? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to order it? No. Oh. It's a huge scam. Pop off. Pop off water. It's free Pop though. Pop off water. Okay. Come on, call, bitch. It's not working, dude. Sorry, bro. It doesn't let me call. What's it doing? Nothing. I click it and nothing happens. Hmm. See. That sucks. Can you put it on speakerphone, maybe? That's not going to be the same effect. We'll figure it out for next episode. What's the number? 303-629-9999. Give him the, the note thing. Oh, yeah. You need the... Let's see if it'll I don't want first. anybody knowing my membership number. Yeah, so I don't know. It might. Is they, I think they probably have Google Voice blocked or no, something. No, I called from my Google Voice number. That's what I just wanted to... I'm telling you, try not let me do it. Asshole. Try dial one first. Why are you being an asshole? You try dial one first. It it finds the number. Like it finds it. It's like, is this the number? And it's like, yeah. But I click it, and then nothing happens. You didn't type the whole number in. I did. I don't believe you. <laughs> this man thinks I am so incompetent that I can't dial in a ten-digit number. Yes, that is true. <laughs> if we're being honest, says the guy. Okay, we won't go there. Six two nine 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 nine. Eric, now it's working. 
Is it really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I rest my case. Welcome to Live Link. <laughs> For <laughs> English, press 1. Para Español, <gasps> oprima 2. Para Español, oprima 2. Go on, press 1. I know, right? Go make it fucking difficult. I didn't even hear it. Yeah. Oh, fucking cut, dog. Whoa. Welcome to Live Links, where you can make lady. a real connection. At Live Links, <laughs> you can browse greetings, exchange messages, and connect live. Whatever you're in the mood for. Zero, so live Links a... is for you. Whatever you're in the mood live for. Live Links is for callers 18 and over. If that's not you, oh, hang yeah. up now. If it is you, get ready to have some real fun. Damn, it's like a, like a, and like a or something. Press one to talk to women. Women, press two to talk to guys. Two. You, I, I, it's <laughs> always free for women. If you have a membership, please enter it now. To learn how a free membership can improve that. your time online, <clears throat> please enter your four-digit passcode. If you've forgotten your numbers, press the... You have one new message in your message box. To check yeah. your new messages now, press 1. Or to continue, press If you have a mobile phone, you can receive a text alert the next time you receive a message while you're offline. To set up your alerts, press 1. If you don't want to activate alerts at this time, press 2. To repeat these, alerts have not been activated. You can turn them on oh God, at any time message. from Shit. the main menu. <laughs> Just go to manage your membership. Fuck. New messages will be deleted after you hear them, uh, unless you specifically choose to save them by pressing six. First new message. Message received oh, October 16th, 2020, 545 p.m. Ryan. Hey there, this is Ryan. You sound great. Hope you're having a good Friday so far. I don't know if you're interested in talking or jump out. Take care. This is almost Send depressing, man. <laughs> I can't fucking do this. These poor, lonely men on fucking four. live links. Save this message. Press six. To, to block this to caller, Ryan. press seven. Can message you saved. Book? Send a reply. Press two. Skip message. Press three. Add this member to your hot list. Press four. To unsave this message, press six. To block this caller, press seven. For more info on this message and its sender, press eight. Repeat this eight. message and menu choices. Press to hear their name and greeting, press one. To hear their Hi, last Ryan. known I'm location, press two. To hear when they were last on press the line, one. press three. This caller's name is... Ryan. Ryan. Here's their most recent saved greeting. Hi, ladies. This is Ryan. It's Friday. And it's getting ready to be the evening. Yeah, I'm a ready bit to before fuck. five. Hope you're all doing great. I'm a Denver native. 32, six feet, 190. Ooh, Blue eyes, brown hair. Just looking for a fun friend for the weekend or longer. Or longer. No, no. Take it easy. He gave you options. To hear their name and greeting, this press weekend, one. Or to hear their last yeah. known location, press two. To hear when they were last on the line, press three. To repeat these choices, press nine. To exit, press pound. Let's go into let's, the system and listen yeah, to Yeah, let's dudes. listen to the... Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> This is just way more depressing than I anticipated. <laughs> to hear their name and greeting, what do I click press in? one. To hear their last known location, press two. To hear when they were last on the line, press three. To repeat the these queue? choices, press nine. To press, exit, press pound. Press pound. pound. Send a reply, pound it. press two. Skip message, press three. Add this member you? to your hot list, press four. To unsave this message, press six. To block this caller, oh, press God. seven. For more info on this message and its sender, Press 8. Repeat this message and menu choices. Press 9. For help with using the live... Ryan. We're just burning money now. If this it is, on the no, line, it's free guys, for me. Right, but the guys pay for this. Okay, so all that... So I'm not sure in oh yeah, he paid to leave a voicemail. Hey. Send a reply. Press 2. Okay, we're, we're, we're spinning our wheels here. Can you hit 0? No. I hang uh, Why do uh, you hang up? I want to listen to the... Because we're people. getting nowhere. We have to call back. All right, call back. This could be our whole show. Cause we have, a, we have, we have to take it off. Do not disturb, or we can have a guy call. We have to answer. Welcome to, the, the to Live Links for English. Press one. But Espanol, James Earl Jones soundboard. Maybe yeah. I should do a different state. If you build it, we can't because they will come off GPS. Mm. For English, press one. But it's Welcome back to Live Links. Live Links is for so callers 18 memories. and over. If you're under this 18, my, hang up now. Pretty much my mid-90s. Guys, press 1 to talk to women. 
women. Press 2 to talk to Gus. It's always free for women. If you have a membership, please enter it now. To learn how a free membership can improve your time online or Please enter your four-digit passcode. Bang wow. on you. It's it. always free for women, <laughs> so if you're ready to join the action, they need press a one. Gym whistle. To go to your message box, <laughs> press three. For information on using mm -hmm. our system, press four. To manage your membership in hot list, <clears throat> for questions about memberships and prices, press one. Other questions about using Live Links, Let's press, press two. 1. For your local Live Links access number, press 4. For our web address, press, press 5. For help, press the. You're already logged into your free membership. For questions about memberships and prices, press 1. Other oh, questions yeah. about using Live Links, press 2. For your local Live Links access number, press 4. For our web address, press 5. For I help, press take us zero. to the messages. To repeat these oh, choices, okay. press 9. To re for information on how to use the system, press 1. For the number to call in your area, press 2. To repeat these choices, press 9. Return to the previous menu, press to find the... Damn. That wasn't a valid area code. Please try again. To find the closest number to where you're currently calling from, press 1. To find a number by... We're now looking up the number to call in your local area. Call 303. Oh, I wonder if because our number is not local. Nine nine. That's three zero three six two nine. That's why nine 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 nine. So to repeat these numbers, press nine. No, press our... any other key or hold yeah, to continue. Matter. For information on how to use the system, press one. For the number to call in your area, press two. To repeat these choices, press we should nine. Recognize this Return to for the traveling. previous menu. Press pound. To press speak with pound. customer service, press zero. For questions about memberships and prices, press one. Mm. Other questions about using Live Links, press two. For your local Live Links access number, press four. For our web address, press five. For help, press zero. To repeat these choices, oh, press nine. All right, to for information on how to use the system, press one. For the number to call in, okay. you have a Google Voice number you can call through. This is. Just, I'm assuming it's reading us as five three zero. Which I think is called uh, we could probably try it once we get off air here. Yeah, yeah. We're, we'll have to figure out how to do it, and then we'll uh, come back next week. And we'll... yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I'm Ryan. Six, one, 103 Oh, we're going to send the number to Ryan. We'll talk to him. <laughs> hey, Ryan. <laughs> this is Morgan Freeman. I wish I could do that. Some of those guys are so good at their impressions. It's amazing. Yeah, like, where do you even start? I guess that's what you do. You sit in. Is that. Would that be illegal? What? For us to call him like that? And I guess not, huh? Man, we should get a, a Morgan Freeman. We could get on Fiverr and have a Morgan Freeman guy leave, like a, this, if it gets leave a voicemail on her thing. This is Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Andy Dufresne. <laughs> Some birds are just too brightly colored to be caged. That'd be cool. Um, I, I don't know. I, I look at it like this. If we get in trouble, then we've got publicity. Get in trouble from who? Are the cops going to be here? Are you calling Live Links as Morgan Freeman? <laughs> <laughs> Morgan Freeman's upset. He's got his own account. <laughs> He's fucking up his game. <laughs> uh, I thought maybe if I did like a profile in New York or something, I would get more responses. Because when I got on It is a before, joy at the pizza parlor. <laughs> you want to go out sometime? I got a micro penis. <laughs> weekend or longer. I got a calf. <laughs> I love you. You sound great. I don't know how well, big are your tits. Maybe you got to set it up. And man, it's weird that it won't. Because we're still bouncing off. No, because of the internet. Mm -hmm. we, if we were doing a cell phone, we'd be bouncing off tires. Because of towers. the it. <laughs> we're bouncing off tires and the internet. And I, what's going on? Where's the modem? Are we still dialed into AOL? <laughs> <laughs> That's my impression of you. He loves so that. <laughs> Good asshole. I'm trying to have a serious conversation with you. I'm trying to have a serious conversation about Morgan <laughs> Freeman on Live Links. Come on. <laughs> oh, jeez. But I don't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You don't. But So you're calling from a Google account. Is yeah, I'm saying. calling from the weirded beardos mm. thing. But you're going good. through the internet versus a cell tower. So that might be a big difference. Because it's weird that it doesn't it just redirects you to. Yeah. For the web address, call this number. Well, we can right. have to figure out how to patch in. Um, I can't even know how. We're going to have to get a guy on the inside. We need someone at the phone company. 
Yeah, or we can log into a different. I have a look. We, we need log... to get Edward Snowden on. He'll tell us. Yeah. How do we hack live links? Get us in. <laughs> so my personal is a four eight zero. I do have two local. Oh, we can do the. The Denver YouTubers has a. I have a number for that. That's local. If you want chocolate salty balls, call Jeremy Chatter. And put it in your mouth and suck them. Suck them, suck them, suck them. I think that, that South Park <clears throat> song where Chef is like, you want to suck on my salty chocolate balls? He's talking about like a dessert he made. It's chocolate salty balls. Yeah. Chocolate salty balls. <laughs> put it in your mouth and suck them. Suck them, suck them, suck them. Yeah. We're getting copyright hit with that probably. No, it's not because it's our rendition. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> but your, what is your best impression? Do you have one? Yeah, I can do a Robert De Niro. Go. Let me close my. Hold on, let me close my eyes. No, yeah. no, you got to look at my face. Pretty decent. I'm not gonna lie. But this is this is an audio show. Or we could do a taxi the, driver. It's still Robert De Niro, but the fact that you you've done that in the mirror enough to know that you that you're good at it. That's weird. That's why people don't do it. Because <laughs> I saw <clears throat> I saw an MTV True Life. About impressionists. Okay. And there was a guy, and that's pretty much all he did was that face. And he would draw on a little mole on his cheek. And you just go. Got a pen. Want to mole it up? No. You want to be the no. mole? No. You'd be the molester. And That'd I was be a like, cool tattoo. And I was like, I can, mm-hmm. I can do that face. Anybody could do that face. To do Robert Jr., you just have to like squint and frown and raise your eyebrows. Go. Squint, frown. You have a seizure? <laughs> Did you watch you see her doing it? Yeah. <laughs> I tried. Do a Robert De Niro. Look at her. <laughs> oh, you're watching it on there. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Okay. I'm all, all right. right. Let's, let's see your Robert De Niro. No. There's no single black Robert De Niro. Although he does prefer a black woman. You can do a Robert really? De Niro. Really? You just got to try. Come on. Yeah. Put yourself out there. I can't. Come on. I can't do that. One time. What am I? What am I? <laughs> You, look you like just look like you had man. something sour, like, oh, <laughs> so funny. Is that lemon juice? So, um, all right, so I'm, what am I doing? I'm smiling. You got to frown and raise your eyebrows and squint. Am <laughs> <laughs> I frowning enough? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a perfect. Good... It is terrible. Uh, it is... You look like a ching chong bing bong yeah. <laughs> looks oh. like you're trying to fucking imitate some asian guy I'm robot the noodle <laughs> welcome to shitty walk <laughs> i walk your dog <laughs> delicious how come when you do it it's not racist but when i call her jenny from the brock i'm racist which because is so cool for the announcer and jenny from the block or brock brock because you're a singer do you have any of your music? And we have Jenny DeBrock Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was good. Oh. Jenny DeBrock. <laughs> Can you smell what DeBrock is cooking? <laughs> <laughs> it smells like pad thai. <laughs> Buck sauce, soy sauce? <laughs> oh, wow. Do you have any impressions? Not really. No. I've never really practiced on any. Come on, give us a Lucy Lou. I don't want to. I have to practice on it before I do it. Have you practiced in the past or you just being okay? You do one. Yeah, Lucy let's, Lou. See Lucy. No, <laughs> let's, let's see Lucy. No, I don't have it. Let's see Lucy Lou. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> Lucy Lou. His Lucy Lou and Robert Lucy. De Niro are eerily similar. <laughs> 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 Who knew they had so much in common? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right. How about Samuel L. Jackson? Say I can't. That's the thing. I, I think you need to believe that you can do them. Right. In Getting to, character. Yeah. That's hard for me. See, I could. I could do like him. See, to do him, you need glasses and like one of those berets on backwards or whatever. You know, the, the, with the kangaroo that 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 brand the has kangaroo. the camera. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, or because all I would do be doing is an impression of him as a character. Right. Because that's all I know. Like. Some go. Oh, what was it? Ezekiel, Ezekiel 25 13. Or like, this is a tasty burger. This is a big kahuna burger. Whatever. I can't remember <laughs> all that. that. Pulp fiction. Oh, or like Royale with cheese. Sure. Give me my wallet. Which wallet is it? 
The one that says bad motherfucker. See, you sound like a white dude trying to be black. I know. That's all I can do. Yeah. Or I could do Ving Rhames. Uh, what is it? How's it going? Uh, Arby's. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that to That was good. That was <laughs> we have the meats. That's not Ving Rhames. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. I'm going to have some hard pipe hitting niggas come here. You just want to say the N word. Go to town on your ass with a blowtorch and a pair of pliers. What is that from? Pulp Fiction. After he gets raped by that white guy in the basement. I've only watched And Bruce Willis once. frees him. And he's like, okay, I'm going to let you go as long as you leave town and never speak about this <laughs> ever again. And then he turns to that guy. He's like, I'm going to have some hard pipe hitting uh, black friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm not in character, I can't say it. I understand. So, uh, yeah, he, goes, oh, he shoots him in the dick first with a shotgun. Boom! And then he's like, oh, I'm going to have my buddies come over here and burn you up. And I think you need to rewatch Pulp Fiction. It's such a good movie. It really is. You enjoy I mean, it? I've watched it a couple times, but I don't remember. <clears throat> See, how come Quentin Tarantino can say the N-word, but I can't? Because you don't have Quentin Tarantino type money. That's true. Damn. If you buy my freedom, you can, you can say it. If I, if I give you $20 million to be in my movie, then I get a free pass. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, in Pulp Fiction, he is like, he really goes over the top with his N-word usage. Because they bring, he, oh, oh shit, I shot Marvin in the face. And then they drive over to his house. And he goes, Cause, But he has a black wife in that movie. In the story, he has a black wife who's like a nurse or something, and she's gone. And he comes, do you see a sign on my door that says dead storage? No, you don't see a sign on my side that says dead storage. Why do you know the movie so well? It it's funny, you're talking about all these, because it says the N-word so much, that you, oh, I'm going to dialogue that I can use it for <laughs> my people. Even though I don't know what a kangaroo is. This is how a kangaroo on it. Any, every black person knows what a kangaroo is. I, I don't know. I know that he wears those hats, and so does Samuel Jackson. So yeah, They were big in the the rap scene of the 80s. Hmm. Have you seen Jackie Hell Brown? Cool J. I don't think so. It's like... I don't really get into... That was like one of his... Black like exploitation his... type. That's what he was going for, right? I don't, no, I don't think so. I've, I haven't seen it. Oh. Because I don't like female leading uh, roles. <laughs> Not that I have anything <laughs> against females, but yeah. usually they're boring. Well, we can't... Re- yeah, and, and, and it's not that we're against females. It's hard to, to put yourself in that situation. It's like, I, I don't... I don't but yeah, because she's a, she's a flight attendant, and there's they're trying to scam somebody out of their money, and uh, but it's got Samuel Jackson, and it's got Chris Rock before he gained all that weight. Not Chris Rock, uh, Chris Tucker, excuse me. I swear you don't all look alike, but I get confused with Chris. Wow, <laughs> seen one you seen one black Chris, seen them all. But they are, to be fair, both skinny black comedians with the first same name, same first name. Yeah, I guess one one is substantially doing a lot better than the other, but. Yeah. I heard yeah. that. I heard that Chris Tucker got involved with some type of sex trafficking thing. He was a pimp. That was like a rumor I heard. Mm. Could be totally off on that. Never know. But he, mm. he's your. He belongs to you guys because he. After he what? Just because he did Rush Hour? No, because Friday put him on the map, and mm-hmm. he refused to come back and do other Fridays. So he like pretty much sold out for the month. Like you, well, because the black community rose you up and put you on the spot and supported you. And you're like, all right, I'm out. You can't pay me enough. Fuck you. Well, also, Friday was the only one that was like based on Ice Cube's life. Like the second one and the third one, those were just spinoffs. The first Friday, he based on his life. Right. But if you don't have Chris Tucker signed on to do Friday, too. Well, they got Mike you, Epps. That's like once, like pretty close. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> and they're both <laughs> shitty actors. But at the same time, it is because of um, the Smokey character. That it was what it was. Come on, man. I'll take that chain. My grandma will give me that chain. Yeah. My best Chris Tucker impression. But it wasn't Chris Tucker. If you uh, want a Chris Tucker impression, find me on Fiverr. But it, was, it wasn't Chris Tucker that... I mean, my grandma would give me that chain. It was DJ Pooh. Wasn't it? Because he ran off to the car. I thought that Tuck, was... You know, I'm, oh, tuck your chain. Like, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm just going yeah. to tuck mine. Yeah. yeah tuck his, D, here comes Debo. I, you know... Uh, Ice Cube had to like go find Debo in real life. Apparently, that was his real name. He had to like ask him like permission because he didn't want to change. He changed all the other yeah, characters' names, but he didn't want to change that name. It's like Lester or something. So he found Debo, Debo and was like, "Can you, I want to use your name in this movie?" What's his name? It's like something Lester. I don't know. But the actor they found to play Debo, he's just fucking mean looking. Yeah. Well, Terry Crews hasn't hadn't surfaced yet. 
Right, but Terry Crews is more like slapstick humor kind of thing. Yeah, he's in the other. I'm a boy, Damon. <laughs> With a uh, because uh, what's his name? Cat Williams. Because he tries to have because he comes. They have the party, and he just got out of prison. Have you seen the Friday After Next? No, no. Uh, I stopped it. Uh, Ice Friday. Cube and Day Day have an apartment and they're throwing a Christmas party. And the landlord, but they're they're back on the rent, so they're throwing the party to get money for rent. But the landlady, this son, is the one where like the the guy breaks in, steals all the Christmas presents. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I've then the it. landlord's son is Terry Crews, who just got out of prison, and he tries to corner Cat Williams. Oh yes, 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 because he's gay. Yeah, and he wants to fuck. Him. Yeah, he knocks him out and fucks him he in the bathroom. Pulls off his clothes, and he's got uh, oh, phone yeah. books taped to his body. And, and yeah, and Cat Williams like <laughs> faints. He's like, oh. Faints in the bathroom. <laughs> and he grabs his nuts with like a, with pliers. I am a boy, Damon. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right. Fucking Cat Williams. You see that video of him slapping the, the Target cashier? No. Who? Cat, Cat Williams, Williams bitch slapped the fuck him. out of a Target cashier. <laughs> I seen the, him getting beat up by the, like that 13 year old. They're playing basketball and they started shitting and they, they do whoop the cable pretty fast. <clears throat> All right. We'll have to watch this without. I, I don't even think there's sound anyway. But it's like this. Um, well, I got all. Oops, I gotta go like this. Like share screen. Uh, no. Uh, this is not Full Metal Jacket, sir. All right, let's. Uh, all right, so I don't know what they were talking about. I've never found this out, but I haven't seen it. It's old. Yeah. Yeah, without sound, it's not the same. So those of you who are listening or watching the video of Cat Williams from December 2012. Yeah, and the interaction is they're having some type of thing, and you can see just by the hand on the chest that the cashier's he's done something, he's like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know, man. Whatever. Like, it's my, bad, it's my bad. Yeah, and the cat ain't having it. But yeah, he walked up to the cashier. Like, on, ooh, slap shut up. And even then, the cashier doesn't... Ball, doesn't. He's like, oh, I'm calling the fucking cops, dude. Uh, I just got paid. Of course. No matter what you say to a guy, if he comes up to you and bitch slaps you on camera, and he's a celebrity, you have a case. Especially when there's no fucking audio. And if you don't retaliate. Yeah, exactly. He could have called him the worst racial slur in the world, but we don't know that. Right. We can't hear it. It's his word against that, <clears throat> and we have the video proof of him getting bitch slapped, yeah. but he will be forever the guy who got bitch slapped as a cashier at Target. Yeah, but... That's his 15 minutes of fame. You're the guy who got paid, though. True. I'd take it. But yeah. yeah. Cat Williams, he... From uh, what I've heard in the media, he has a pretty serious heroin problem. I remember when he came here to Denver years ago, he got booed off stage because he was too high to tell his jokes. He's like nodding off on stage. Yeah. And he's got... Mm. Big time little man syndrome as well. He's been caught at the airport for having guns in his luggage and shit going through security. Like, who and, does that? Yeah, you, you should have people around you that you trust absolutely. Same with DMX. What are <clears> these <throat> people? And Ja Rule. Like, all these people are getting gun charges. Like, why? why? <laughs> You're a fucking celebrity. No one's coming after you. Right. You're not You're still, living. like, in the hood, like, fucking rapping about, like, <laughs> oh, this beef, this beef, come at me, bro. Rough riders, motherfucker. Yeah, and it makes zero sense. And DMX is like her size. Is he? Yeah, he's not a very big dude at all. I've, no way. I have met him in Arizona. Yeah, you, he's, you, he's a, yeah, Jenny was just talking about how DMX like disowned his son because his son tried to intervention him for smoking crack. Because when the when Rough Wasn't Riders... Recent? Well, no, his son was just upset because I guess he saw DMX cheat on um, his, his mother. But his son was also trying to pawn DMX's gold records. <laughs> like he was trying to sell like his platinum and gold records that he had from his album sales. Yeah, he had a huge crack problem. The son or DMX? DMX. DMX. I mean, I just okay. Since he's five eleven, there's no way he's five eleven. He's a little dude. I've met him. Were you on the Wikipedia? He's probably like having his voice. No, change that shit. Yeah. Make me six one next time. Five eleven bullshit. <laughs> He's like actually 411. Oh, it's a typo. It's actually meant to type it. Four. Yeah. Talk about a push that was on top. It's weird. Like the, the, the power corrupts. 
Yeah, it's funny because his songs are you know still good to this day. Mm-hmm. Stop the early, the early stuff. Drop, shut him down. Open up shop. You can't find anyone who doesn't know oh. that song. Oh, it's one of the songs in Call of Duty. Exactly. Yeah, I hop on my damn four wheelers. I'm like, God damn it, turn this shit off. You can't find anyone who you know like he did uh, Exit Wounds with Steven Seagal. He did all these fucking. All, he, he had a he peaked in like the early 2000s. Yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. And then, and then Anthony Anderson took over. Was he in Exit Wounds too? I don't know. Yeah, he was. He was in that. But yes. Really, really fat and young. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he was. I totally forgot about that. God. He Terrible can't... fucking movie. Steven Seagal is a fucking shit actor, but he's a great martial when he artist. first came out. And he's a fucking dickhead for being a cop in Louisiana. Douchebag. Such a gay move. He's got that. Who the fuck wants to be arrested by Steven Seagal? Like, right. Because you're going to be on TV and your friends are going to talk shit about you for the rest of your life. It's no different than Shaq. Shaq's like a cop, too, somewhere. He's a cop? Yes. Yeah, so Why? I, I, wow. I don't know, but he was like a. That's so unnecessary. I want to say, so, yeah, he's like. <laughs> I don't know if he is anymore, but there was. Cause there was uh, Cat Williams did a joke about him. About pulling, like when he pulls you over and his dick's resting on your head. <laughs> he's so big. Well, Bow Wow, he's another one who fell off, too. He got outed because. Uh, he took a he took a selfie on a plane for Instagram. He's like taking off in the private jet, and a guy who follows Little Bow Wow on Instagram was sitting right behind him, and saw that post, and then took another picture of him with Little Bow Wow in the background. He's like, "This is a Delta flight." <laughs> totally outed him. And there was that episode of Catfish where uh, this woman was like, "Oh yeah, Little Bow Wow, he's a." Uh, he sent me money. He gave me some, you know, money to go get a uh, new furniture and this and that. And it turns out it was actually a little bow wow. <laughs> but they thought mm-hmm. she thought she was getting catfish. Yeah, Sha- Shaquille O'Neal was a part-time police officer in Florida, wow. and his his annual salary was a dollar. Yeah, they don't oh. need to fucking pay Shaq. But I understand, like, yeah, like you, if you wanted to be a police officer, you shouldn't want to fucking college to be a basketball player. And I understand you. Everybody's got dreams, but be realistic with yourself. I mean, but if you, no one's taking you fucking serious, when you if play. your free throw game is that bad anyway, I mean, you might as well give up and go be a police officer. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the NBA thing to work out. <laughs> if no one ever shouts, no one ever shouts Shaq when they go to make a trash basket. Shaq, not <laughs> yell, yell, Kobe. Too soon. Yeah, there's no. Too soon. There's no good time to call out Shaq. <laughs> Unless you're seven and, feet and, tall and yeah. dunking on somebody. Yeah, then that, that's, Shaq, baby! <clears throat> that's what you do. But I'd, I'd rather yell out something more obscure like, Carmelo! That'd be cool. <laughs> like Carmelo. But the Utah Jazz Stephen Shakal. Stephen Shakal. Stephen Stephen Sh- Shakal. <laughs> Steven- that's Shaquille O'Neal and Stephen Shakal's <laughs> hybrid child. Stephen Shakal. He's got a ponytail. <laughs> He's seven feet tall. <laughs> he wears glasses. <laughs> but his was a hard to kill. It was his first film? I saw that in theaters. That was in like the late eighties. And I was like, oh my god, that was when he was still skinny and didn't look like a, a total douchebag. He was married to Kelly LeBrock, and she was... Is that the, the one where he takes a, like a two-liter bottle and tapes it on the end of a gun and uses it as a silencer? I don't know. <laughs> Some of the stuff was, they had in those old movies. It's one big movie in my head now. Yeah, I'm sure. He peaked around Glimmer Man, and that was with uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans. But he was... The first movie was... Because he, he hadn't seen it before. And this is when like Bloodsport was coming out, martial arts movies were taken serious. And so he was a legit act, uh, action star in the beginning. See, if he would have had a French accent like Van Damme, he would have been the shit. Yeah. But no one wants to see an American kicking everybody, everybody's ass. It's more enigmatic to see a French guy But he guy plays doing the it. same... He, he, he can only, like you said, he can only play Steven Seagal. He plays the same character in every single movie. He's still That's making true. movies. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Bloodsport was good, but it's, it, it, it's a sign of the times, like, of course... They would show like a, a white man going into Thai culture and then dominating every Thai guy. Like, no, it's that's not, not going to happen. It's not realistic. Yeah, yeah. kickboxing was cool, but eh, not realistic. Yeah, you're not going to go in there as a white guy, and you're not going to totally dominate in that sport. I mean, just because the culture, like Muay Thai, is like its own rite of passage. They're you got to be a badass yeah. to go in there. Are people who train from like they're ten years old doing Muay Thai. But then Bloodsport was a good movie. But then that, the the real Frank Dukes. Was a full blown piece of shit liar. Like there's no such thing as a Kumite. There is a Kumite now because someone picked up on it. And I want to run with it and create a thing called the Kumite. 
but there was no such thing, I guess, prior to that, and he just made it all up. But then the internet came around. By the time he had the movie and made it, the internet starts to come out like, bro, you're full of shit. Like, nothing you said in the movie makes any sense. Like that Chris Kyle story where he talked about punching Jesse Ventura in the face at a bar, which turned yeah. out to be a total, like, bizarre lie. Yeah, because you had a person that came out and called you out on it. Like, oh, yeah, I was wrong. I was because it's, it's just like, why would you make that up? People yeah. are going to fact check that shit. You can't just and, say you put... See, if it was just like a normal guy. And he's still alive. Just like, this, Jesse Ventura was like the governor of fucking Minnesota, Minnesota at the yeah. time. So like, you know, he's a, oh, yeah. He has people who can look that shit up. Yeah, it's like, yeah. okay. Yeah, because Jesse Ventura was like on Fox News. Oh, yeah, Chris Power on Fox News. is like, yeah, he. that's where he started talking about the whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like, dude, if you're going to... At least make the story about somebody who's obscure. You can't lie about an ex wrestler, now but current it, governor. But it goes back to bad press. How many copies of the book did it sell? Just one of those things you you you, you cashed out and mm-hmm. true. You are. But it also like invalidates like a lot of other things. Well, how do we know he's not lying about his confirmed kills? How do we know he's not lying about this? It just totally makes it makes you question everything else he's done, and like it makes me not take him seriously as a person. Because when I think of a, a hardcore Marine sniper or whatever, I think of like honor, integrity, honesty. I don't think of like making up a bizarre right. barroom <clears throat> brawl for attention. Right. Oh, do you know who Dick Marcinko is? No. Yeah. I rest my case. Like who? he's the founder of SEAL Team 6. Oh, okay. But it's like his uh, Rogue Warrior. They tried to make a video game that just crashed and burned. I think if you'd incorporate it into Call of Duty, but he, Rogue Warrior is the book. Fucking like amazing book. But it's basically. His biography. But he was one of those guys that fucked up when he was a kid. You either go to prison or you join the, the military. He chose to, jo- cho- chose to join the military. He was a frogman. was like one of the dopest Scot- or like Navy SEALs there was in the frogman of, of his era. And then when it came time to create SEAL Team 6 for pretty much guerrilla modern warfare, he was the one that was chosen, was given unlimited income, his choice of men from the the current SEAL team to create what is known as SEAL Team Six today. That's but badass. It, and there's not one person that's come out like, "No, you're lying." Yeah, it's like it's it's like that's how you fucking become. And he started going on to to write uh like fiction books and stuff like that. Like if you were watching it, like Jocko right? Willink stuff, you're the guy that like on YouTube that corrects the yeah. watches like Call of Duty. Yeah, he's like yeah, yeah critiques war movies and stuff. Yeah. She's fucking jacked as fuck. Yeah. I mean, that guy has some really cool stories. He was on Joe Rogan a few times. He has his own podcast as well. Nice. Yeah. yeah. If you want to read a book, though, yeah, definitely read Rogue Warrior because it talk, it's just goes through. Is it Rogue Warrior? It talks about where they, in order to train for SEAL, the SEAL Team 6 to train, well, how do you train for a real war? You can't train elite soldiers without a threat. And so they would basically infiltrate military installations. As training and shit like that. That's so cool. they would go and break into like top secret government facilities and stuff like that. It's because the threat is real. If you get, if you, the, the guy that you're breaking into doesn't know you're breaking in as a, as a training exercise. So his live rounds, I'm sorry, his live rounds okay. coming back at you are real. And so he doesn't go into a lot of detail because like, that's how you, basically you train for real combat. If you get shot in the training exercise, you get shot for real. So make sure you don't fuck up. Yeah. I think that, you know, they have like live round training exercises at those camps too, like where, you know, they're crawling under barbed wire and they're shooting fucking machine guns right over their head. People die. You know, people get freaked out and raise up. Their oh yeah, train ex- Bam! yeah, training exercises happens all the time. But the, to train the elite, and he was talking about how the they elite. do. They have like index cards, like a regular index card, and you got to be able to like jump through a window with either hand and put two bullets in the center of the index card, on like just coming in nowhere's had to pop it, drop from mm-hmm. the ceiling, pop it. I'm like, are you fucking like the fact that this ex- these people exist is terrifying. Yeah, it makes me think of like those old videos with like Bruce Lee, and he had nunchucks with sandpaper on the end. They're throwing matches at him, and he would light them all on fire. Yeah, they were getting thrown at him, just like supreme skill. So yeah, to have that kind of focus, and that's mm-hmm. all you do. And like, but how do you you train at that level? How do you go back into the real world? I think you have to have like everything. So there's this uh, there's this treatment they have for your soldiers with PTSD. That's not like it's like not a medication. It's like this injection that they put into like the uh, um, the, the ganglia in your in your spine. Okay, and it it lasts for like six months and takes away all your symptoms. Wow. Yeah, the brain's badass, dude. Crazy. PTSD. How many people you fuck up? 
for picking that out. You need to release that to the public. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let someone inject me in the back of my skull. It's terrifying. Once you well, breach... The PSD is bad enough. Then once you, you breach the meninges. Placing an anesthetic agent on the stellate ganglion can relieve symptoms of PTSD in as little as 30 minutes and last for years. Damn. What? It reboots the sympathetic nervous system to its pre-trauma state. Hmm. Right there. The research and the mind. How the fuck do you figure that out? The research and the minds to be able to, like, you know what? Let's go ahead and reboot this bitch. But then, how many people, like, again, how many things, animals, creatures, people got damaged <laughs> so they could find that out <laughs> to get to that point? Let's, uh, Let's inject some Listerine behind the ear here. <laughs> See if yeah. this works. Okay, that didn't work. All right. Nope. Um, <laughs> let's try some cocaine next. All right. Let's go in the spine this time. Okay, still not. All right. Let's try semen. <laughs> but you got to suck it out of this hose with your eyes blindfolded. And uh, don't complain about the taste. I was talking about a Navy dude. There's gay people in the Navy. Yeah. Oh, you mean semen, semen. I was just talking about just regular semen. Like you just take blood from. Are there more than one type of semen? I mean, semen is semen. I mean, yeah. Once you sucked one, they keep sucked them all. Right. I mean, I guess. I mean, is that how you feel? Probably not a huge taste difference. I mean, there's not like a you know. Not a big variation. Just do it the same way every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One method. Suck one and suck them all. You feel that way about eating vagina? Um, Do white guys do that? I don't know. That's a. I don't know. Maybe. I don't. I don't eat bush, so. You don't? No. I'll turn somebody down. Nasty. Freaks me out. Wow, we should have brought that up when we had the sex therapist. I wish I'd known this before. I don't. I won't. I've had, I've turned people down for the same reason. So. As a teenage boy. Mm-hmm. Did you have a bad experience? <laughs> no. I just, it's just a turnoff for me. I okay. don't like a hairy pussy. It grosses me out. But a shaved one. Just because I started watching porn so young. It's just that's what I thought was the cool thing, and that's what I always liked ever since. Oh, oh you eat vagina, just not hairy ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, man. I was like, I was like, my heart was breaking for you. Oh, you're, you're, you, thought, oh you thought I didn't eat oh. pussy altogether. Oh, I was like, no, man. I don't eat hairy pussy. That's that explains it. so much about Jenny. That's what I mean when I say bush. What does that explain about me? Nothing. I was just being. <laughs> okay. But it was like, oh, fuck. The whole time my heart's breaking. I'm like, oh, man, you're a dick, dude. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. I, mean, I was starting to dislike you a great deal. But can you tell us? What is uh is there a taste difference between human semen or horse semen? Well, I would think so. <laughs> based, on, <laughs> based on diet. Yeah. Because now that Probably I'm a lot of chlorophyll. Now that I'm eating less sugar, I assume it's not as tangy. I don't know. We gotta find a horse. How much money would it take? Because <laughs> Chris Pontius did it on Jackass for to drink for fun. horse semen. Yeah, he just took a sip Ooh. of horse semen, and then he said something like, "God, my father's going to be so ashamed." Because I, I had that that tickle, like I was I almost wanted to vomit. Yeah. It would take. It'd probably be very, very barnyardy. It would like hay and barleyish. Yeah, I don't know. It would take. <laughs> So I was like, oh. This is very hoppy. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you'll drink piss for a thousand. Mine, and I'm going to take care of you. Thanks. Because I want to make sure I drink a lot of water. So be, I wouldn't like to eat that. Yeah, I guess you'd be, pr- you'd be prone to be getting like some RBST in there. and Who knows what the fuck they get horses these days. Man, I don't, yeah. A thousand just seems, I want to start, I think a thousand dollars is the starting that point. That seems low. It seems right. low for horse semen. But if any conversations you throw It also in, depends on how much you have to drink, though. Is there really a... I'm sure they have quite a large load. I mean, it's probably got to be... <laughs> if it's going to fill the canal... So disgusting. It's got to be fairly... I mean, there's going to be some volume there. I've never, like, measured. Yeah. But I'm sure we can get a horse breeder on. an erect horse penis? Well, that's, the, that's besides the point. We're talking about volume <laughs> of semen. I don't know. Like, I, like, I would think you got to start with a shot glass to make it worth it. Because you want to be able to see it, but... I don't know. Cause is it chunky? Because you, <laughs> you look at it. There's like curdles. Is it globby? It. Is it kind of like fucking. Because you ever watch like, like bad, runny no. yogurt? But you've watched like blowjob porn and some women like they'll swallow it like it's nothing because you never saw it. This right down the throat, swallow it, they're done. But then you have the ones that like show it, like they open it, like, open your mouth. And then they'll open their mouth and then as soon as they open their mouth, they start to gag like it's 
Ugh. That's what I think about. And that's just a little bit. That's not even a horse level. Right. So you've got to remove it from the horse, put yeah. it into a container. Now you're now it's at room temperature. Well, they have they have devices for that for so, like, right, but the seminal fluid and the semen is gonna start to separate almost immediately. Yeah. It's wonderful. Then it's gonna start the, the, you're gonna get two different textures when you swallow. So for me to do it, I would have to do it straight from the source. You're gonna need a little bit of salt and a lime. Yeah. I couldn't put a price on <laughs> doing it. He's it was, gonna donate it, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> let's get a let's I'm, get a Kickstarter going. We're, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do this for the kids. No. The kids need it. God, for <laughs> the children. It would have to be all the money would go to a charity. <laughs> yeah, I, I I couldn't. I'm sorry. There's no. I couldn't name a number. Like you're quick to to drop numbers. I don't think I could for any amount of money. <laughs> All the proceeds will be going hey, to the Sea Biscuit Foundation. We're gonna need you to suck off, uh, Mr. Ed, <laughs> or we're killing Stephen. I'm like, man, I'm gonna miss Stephen. <laughs> a great deal. Don't worry, I would let you die for the same reason. Oh, bro, <laughs> we're on the same page. Okay, just not gonna happen. I wouldn't even ask you to do it. I would just if I was approached for that, I would just be like, Phew, well, I'm gonna have to lie about this. <laughs> but you would ask him to eat your poop. <laughs> Yeah, that's so totally different. That's yeah, I'd rather eat horse poop <laughs> than human poop. Just because it's just it's just grass. Oh, yeah. Grass. You don't gotta worry about like Snickers from ten years ago. Some kind of <laughs> well, is this the gum you had in ninth grade? Same thing. Horse chewing gum. Yeah, it's just hay mm-hmm. and double mint. <laughs> double the fun. I mean, look at the flies and the flies love it. So it's one of those you've had shrooms before, you've had close to it. But well, I didn't grow mushrooms out of poop. Mm-hmm. Grew them out of... Um, they probably weren't that good. Brown rice flour, almond meal, and vermiculite. Okay. I remember those days. Yeah, eating shit would be hard. But it would be easier to eat shit than it would drink semen. Really? Both are going to make me vomit. It would be easier for you to eat shit. Like a shot glass of shit, runny the, shit, chunky yeah. shit. Oh. Would, yeah, we're <laughs> changing the game now. Like, are we talking about Indian food, curry, Mexican food? Are we talking about like, you know, spicy Southern barbecue? Or are we talking about something solid? Or, or, or are we talking about like a like a senior citizen diet of like insure and applesauce? <laughs> uh, see that that changes the game. Texture, make, I'm big on texture. So you want it solid. I would almost like a, like an ice cream scoop of it. We're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna make a like lick it, uh, uh, one lick at a time. <laughs> yeah. How many licks does it take to get to the uh, center of a tootsie turd? We could even put it on a cone. Yeah, we we'll put a little tootsie <laughs> pop at the center so you have a little nugget to look forward to. I watched to. a YouTube video of a guy. He picked up a piece of shit and he took a bite out of it and I vomited. <laughs> so it's like no. And I don't even know if it was even real, but it was like a, it was oh like, god. Said, oh, who's that? He reached down and just. I just, just came I, yeah, I saw a video of a, of a girl sucking on a face. dirty tampon, and that was enough for me to to heave. <laughs> oh, okay, that's that's mm. that's. Uh... All right, how much was it? <laughs> it? Was it her tampon? Or yeah, was it was her own. It was her oh, own. Okay, that's All right. different. Yeah, I had a friend. Not I worked with. I worked with a, with a guy who would talk about man, don't knock it till you try it. As far as like the Red Wings and going down on a girl during her period. I'm like, what the heck? Because it's a thing. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Yeah, you gotta switch the tables a little bit, like or the subject. <laughs> what do you mean? I, like a a woman asking a woman to go down on a penis that's like bleeding. It was hers though. Yeah, it's just a herpy breakout. <laughs> Lick the pus off. <laughs> oh. It's all well, natural. I mean, with, it's only with, me, baby. Yeah. With period, there's tissue and all that. Oh, trust me. I bet there's tissue on a herpy breakout, too. Could you imagine what a pussy pussy tastes like? A pussy pussy? Pussy pussy. Oh, pussy pussy. <laughs> yeah, how do you spell Similar it? spelling. Yeah. Mm. The tongue twister. Literally. <laughs> yeah, like I don't... Ooh. Have you ever done that before? Done what? 
Went down on a woman that... No. No, 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 no. 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 Not on air anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue this conversation later. If you want to weird because be, being... Check a, out my private profile in the next videos if you want to know the truth. Being a butcher for so long, I'm very sensitive to the smell of blood. Mm. And so it's, it's a weird... It's, yeah. I, one, it's, it's just, yeah. No. Mm. No. Yeah, it has a and special that, smell to it. Yeah, because I, I understand it from like the... From the the physiological standpoint, like it's your body is purging things it doesn't want. Mm. Anything your body doesn't want, I don't want. Right, right. And it's the uh, I don't know. Ooh, no. <laughs> but Steve would do it for twenty five thousand dollars. How much would it take for you There's, to drink uh, a shot glass of? No, I'd rather drink. I'd rather drink semen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. When you're trying to come up with things. What would you rather do? Drink semen or suck on a dirty tampon? I guess it depends on whose semen. Mine. My <laughs> semen, her tampon. I would want like Tom Cruise's semen because then I could spit it into a vial, impregnate her, and collect the child support. It's totally worth it. I mean, the end game on that is solid. I agree with you, but that just came out like you've thought about this. That was a real kind that of, is, uh, you guys, you've had that like conversation a, a, before, huh? Yeah. But why Tom Cruise? Any any wealthy man, but he, I, I assume he takes care of himself because he's like almost 60 and looks like he's 20. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's got something going on. Whatever he's doing, he's doing it well. So He could be drinking horse semen. I, maybe that's the whole secret. Would that be crazy? <laughs> we'll never know because like, it's Jeremy, probably a Scientology. Jeremy drinks some horse semen. He looks fucking 40. His hair grew back. I'd be like, holy. Yeah, if I ever see you and all of a sudden you look like fucking uh, Gemini Man or whatever, I'll be like, this motherfucker is drinking horse semen and fucking. Well, here's what's the, what's the de- un- unborn fetuses. Like, hold on, Steve, let me make you a code. I'd be like, fuck it. It works. And then you fucking. I go through with it and then you just pull off the wig and the makeup and like, gotcha. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> he drank horse semen because I look young. <laughs> That's great. Goability level of 9,000. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very trusting. That's the thing, too. You got to come, like, you got to go there. Like, their hygiene. There's so many things that come into play with stuff like that. Right. So, really? Yeah. But again, would you rather drink? My semen or suck on her tampon? Until it's white again. Until <laughs> so it's white again. I don't know if that'll ever happen. It's very... Yeah. You gotta give it the old college try. Yes. This is sound... <laughs> this... Well, whatever. whatever. If, if I did it either way. The, you gotta wrap the string around your finger. And... <laughs> yeah, you just drag it through your teeth. <laughs> yeah. Floss your teeth with yeah. it. Because mm. it's gonna swell in your mouth, too, because that's what the nature of a tampon. Oh, shit. Yeah, would you do that? Would you put a tampon in your mouth just to see what happens? No. I knew guys in wrestling would put them up their nose for a bloody nose. Well, yeah. Uh, mm. No, I'm not going to suck A clean up. one. Not a dirt nose. It's a good well, tampon. All organic cotton. Trust me, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's designed to go into a vagina. It's got to be clean. Right. Well, so I, heard, you... I heard about I heard stories of people like soaking them in vodka and shoving them up their ass. Get drunk. Well, I've dropped them wow. in the toilet. They get huge. Yeah. So I'm curious what would happen if you put it in your mouth. Would you do that for me? You know how much spit it would take to like ignore and fill that? I don't want to just... But it's going to pull all the moisture out of you. Go. Yeah, I mean, if I want cotton mouth, I'll just have some weed. I don't need to suck a tampon. <laughs> I'm asking you to suck on Would you suck piss from a tampon? Well, you just dip it in like a sauce, like yeah. a nugget, like a yeah, little... Yeah, instead <laughs> of ice cubes, just put a tampon in there. It's the there human au jus. So it would take like a little... Uh, tangy barbecue chicken nugget dipping sauce container. Put some urine in it. Give you a tampon. You just dip it in. No. What if you mix it with ketchup? Or your favorite dipping sauce? Ketchup. What's your favorite dipping sauce? It doesn't matter. No, I'm just curious. Now, now I'm just curious. It's a friend. dipping sauce with piss in it. It's still a <laughs> piss sauce. Come on, stop. Focus on the, the negative. What's your favorite dipping sauce? God, what, what is that fucking brand? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, Hidden Valley is ever going to come out with Piss Ranch. How do you know? Peppercorn Piss. Come on down. It's good for your carrots. Yum, yum. Gobble, gobble. But how do you know that there's not urine already in it? 
you just take their brand as a technically there's there's rat shit in ground black pepper because they when they harvest it they can't control all the rats that get yeah, in there. Almost all soups have microorganism stuff. And so you're you're statistically very likely to get uh, rat shit in your ground black pepper. Wow, I eat so much pepper. I love pepper. It's yeah. probably sterilized. I mean, you're not going to get hantavirus. <laughs> that we know of. <sighs> I'll eat yeah, it think, anyway. Yeah. It, trees can eat shit, so I can eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Same principle. Yeah. Flies. I mean, I mean, look at the movie Roots. Zing. Because of Roots. Three Roots. <laughs> Come on, that was a good one. No. I've never even seen the movie, so I don't far. What's that? Your name? There's no tree it's named my, Akunta Kinte. It's on my voodoo. The the new one, not the new one's fucking vicious. Vicious. It's because it's. We gotta think. Have, have you watched that? Um, the last episode of uh, Raised by Wolves. I did. It's stupid. It changed. You the think so? Whole... It went from us oh, really cool sci fi utopian type situation. I like the storyline because we don't know what's inside that that rock. Mm-hmm. We don't know who's whispering to them. We don't yeah. know who's the five sided Pentagon. All this stuff, but there's so much going on. I hate snakes. And then yeah, I and then all of a sudden that. she's pregnant with something. Where the fuck did it come from? But then they try to kill it by going through the tube and killing it in the core, which shoots them out on the other side. Because the, the episode was called the beginning. So I was thinking maybe that was sending them through a wormhole and put them back on the beginning of the planet. Mm-hmm. And that's where those skeletons were coming from. But then it just went and shot back on the other side in the, the inhabited area. They talked about the tropical zone mm-hmm. as a great big flying snake. Which that just, is disgusting. Which has ruined just, the entire ten episodes or the nine episodes prior for And me. it came out of her mouth. Yeah. That's is a fucking stupid show now. Well, come on. You've all seen Species, right? Same thing. Okay. But that's not where it started. It started with them going it's to a low planet. It's low-key a sequel <laughs> to Species. <laughs> it started sending them to a planet to, to rehab it Earth. But then you find out that the dude that created her put that in her. No, we she gathering. got she got hacked. She got hacked. Yeah, her system was hacked. And that wasn't actually else. that guy. She th- she she talks to uh, father and is like, I think it was, I think it was something else. It was, um, it's not right. It wasn't our creator. She got duped because she wanted a piece of the D. She liked it too. Well, yeah, I mean, she was. So, where do you think it came from? The hacked by who? I don't know. That's the question. Soul. Those evil people. Soul. Praise soul. Yeah, soul. Praise soul. I'm Ragnar Lothbrook. Because, but why wouldn't? See, it's weird because how come none of the kids or the organic tissue was infested by the? Because she had to feed it with blood from other people. It would have made sense to versus hacking an android with this organism. You you had the guy that was in the mask, but they wanted the the powers of the necromancer to be transferred across. But you're asking me to believe. No one's asking you to believe that an atheist rebellion That's like, destroyed the population with a religious sect and then was transported to an ark off the planet of Zelbion or whatever the fuck it was. Right, but, it, but it, yes, it's sci-fi. But then it took sci-fi, oh, look, here, this is awesome, kind of a cool story. 13 years, you raise kids, the other ones died because of the radiation. Okay, we're trying to, the struggles of living on the planet, there's creatures that can kill us, and all this stuff, and blah, blah, for nine episodes of all this. And then, blam, here's a hentai episode. (laughs) Yeah, here's a fucking snake that can fly. Oh, you fucked it all up. Like, I don't know, and we don't know where it came from. They can redeem it. I don't think so. It looks like more more of a leech. Yeah, Yeah, but but it can fly. There's probably leech porn. Yeah. You just so now you it. want me to That's probably why he wants the all that blood. That the necromancer, but she doesn't have her eyes. Her eyes are the power, not her. I don't know. I don't know. That's like saying, I really Listen. enjoy, I want to have a son, but I really want my son to be a Tesla. So I'm going to drop my semen in the tailpipe of a Tesla and hope it takes. It might work. Have you tried? I burnt myself. But it's <laughs> one of those things you. Well, first of all, Tesla doesn't have a tailpipe, okay? It's an electric vehicle. Yeah, stick it in the battery. We all know that. it's one hundred percent. I don't. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a it's a full EV. Okay, electrocuted. 
Is there really no gasoline whatsoever? None. It's 100% electric. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. It's not I like a Chevy Volt or I don't something. I want one. That's too good to the, to the clown. I want to destroy this planet. Too good to the clown? The climate. Oh. This planet needs saying, to be... What, is, this, what this planet fucking needs to be, religion are you looking at? This planet needs to be wiped and cleaned. We need a good purge. <laughs> we need to be cleansed by the clown god. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All right. fuck, it's hot in here. Me. So, since we... You have, like, a bowl or something? Or you, so, when are, we gonna, when are we going to end the season? We have a... Because you guys are going on vacation. Oh, yes, that's right. And so, we need to... So, I guess gonna, the week before Thanksgiving. I'll do that, then. So, we only got, like, three episodes left. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And then we come back after, or what? I think we should take the... Mm-hmm. Until, like, January. Okay. Because like I was talking to Steve, then we can mm-hmm. do some, take the time to focus on doing videos and stuff like that. That's stuff that we've been talking about. And so instead mm-hmm. of doing this on those Fridays or whatever, we get together and there's like several videos I want to do. We can kind of focus on that. And Yeah, none of them are going to get finished in one day. There's there's right. too much planning and writing and shooting yeah. to be, in, to be done in one day. Mm-hmm. Kitchen sink out, or a bathroom sink in my Jeep mm-hmm. that I picked up on the, on the side of the road. So, yeah, there's tons yeah. of stuff we want to do with the Weirder Beatles uh, channel as far as videos and our skits and stuff. Yeah. So I still want to do the tampon video. How to cure cotton mouth. We could just, yeah. Yeah, there you go. You can do videos with us now? You in? Sure, if I, you're going to use mine. You, no. My no. tampons? You're going to oh. do help us do like our Weirder Beatles like skits and stuff. You're I in now. Okay. That'll work. <sighs> I got to pee. You're hot. You know how I really got to pee. So take us all you know. When my bladder's, when my bladder's full, there's a lot in there. All right, three hours, ten minutes. Okay. Steve, Steve's lost it. All right, everybody. Thanks. Peace out.